Welcome to the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, and ESPN's coverage of the 1993 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Semifinal matchup number one should be outstanding. It features a former three-time winner, Mike Siegel, against the defending world nine ball champion, Johnny Archer. Welcome to Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins, who won this tournament twice. I'm John Sanders, and we're getting set for what should be an outstanding semifinal. I know you'd love to be in it, but let's talk first of all about Mike Siegel, who's had a great week so far. You can say a lot about Mike Siegel. He's been playing great. When he's on, he's almost unbeatable. He's won the U.S. Open three times, John, and I know he'd love to make it four times. So he's going to be the guy to beat. He is very hungry because he has not won in a while. Now, Johnny Archer's win been winning about everything recently. Yes, he has. He's won a lot of the Pro Tour events on our Pro Tour. He's the man to beat also, and they're both playing great pool. But Johnny Archer brings a few more shots to the table. As you'll see, I think, in the match, Johnny's going to be jumping balls a lot, and he makes a lot of the balls he jumps. So he's, he's definitely going to be a guy to beat. We will see some exciting shot-making by both players. Our first semifinal matches the three-time U.S. Open champion Mike Siegel against the defending World Nine Ball champion Johnny Archer. It will be a race to 11. Preparing for the lag for the opening break here in Chesapeake, Virginia. We're at the Holiday Inn for the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Semi-final matchup number one. Who do you like on the lag here? <laughs> Take your pick. Both of them lag very well. Closest to the rail. You can touch the rail. Siegel did, and he wins the lag and will have the opening break. Now, how about him in the start of a match? Mike Siegel, the veteran from Baltimore, Maryland, who's won just about everything. How good is he right off the top? I want to see how he breaks the balls. He's going to try and keep the cue ball in the center of the table. This should tell a lot about how the match goes if he's breaking them up. He let the cue ball get away. See, he didn't want to do that. He didn't want the cue ball to go flying around the table. He's kind of fortunate that he didn't scratch, but he's left himself a tough shot on the one ball. He did make the six ball, the green ball, but does he have a shot here? Not really. He's going to play a safety, I would believe. I think he's going to hit the one ball to the rail and back down table and leave the cue ball on the other bottom rail, leaving a very long shot for Johnny Archer. When you talk about playing a safety, how much do amateur players do this? Do they do it enough? I know the professional players know when to do it. Funny you mention that, John. The amateur players seem to leave you in awkward positions a lot because they play different shots than we do. <laughs> he is playing safe. And that's probably about all that Johnny's going to be able to do as he comes to the table for the first time. For sure, Johnny really doesn't have a shot. He's going to probably play the same type of safety, putting the one ball back down table where the cue ball is and leaving the cue ball over on the side rail. Has he gotten better the more he's gone into matches? Has he gotten tournament tough now? Absolutely. Uh, in two years, I think his game has increased about 20, 30 percent. He plays safe as well. It's a very cautious start to this first game. I don't think safety is the best part of his game, but it's tough to play him safe because every time you put him behind the ball, he jumps over it. <laughs> well, you mentioned right at the beginning that we would see some of that, and uh, we'll see how that works out. What's the problem here? There's a ball blocking the view to the one ball. He's, he's behind the seven ball. Actually, the seven ball is in the, way of the, in the path of the one ball, so Mike is going to be forced to go to the bottom rail with the cue ball. That's what he's looking at right now. He's going to hit the cue ball into the bottom rail and try to kick the one ball over to the rail, leaving the one ball down table and... Jo probably Johnny Archer will have a long shot after this. Mike Siegel, a man who takes a lot of time. Off the rail successfully. And Ken, he's hit the one a little bit harder than he'd like to, but he's left Johnny a shot, a shot that Johnny should make, but still not an easy shot under the circumstances. <laughs> he's tucked right next to the ball, and he's got to go clear down to the far corner. He'll bring the cue ball over to the side rail for the two ball, which is laying on the rail over on the other side rail. A little low English, drawing the ball to the side rail and back out. He's got a little straight on the two ball. I think he would like a little more of an angle. He would like to pop the cue ball off the side rail and back out into the middle of the table. But I don't believe he's going to have enough of an angle to do that. So he's going to probably just make the two ball and just try to bounce the cue ball off the rail a little bit. He's got to watch that the two ball doesn't draw out of the pocket because he's going to have to hit a little speed. Oh. And it rattles in. <laughs> but he made it. And he's got a nice shot on the three now. I predict he's going to run the table. The ball's looking uh, good formation right now for him to make the three and get out. He'll play the three and come two rails for the four ball. He's got an interesting shot now, John. He's, the four ball is not, sh not exactly straight in the pocket. He's got a little angle. But he's going to have to hit the cue ball kind of hard with a little low right hand English. 
forcing the cue ball to go to the side rail and back down table for the five ball. Should come on top of the nine, over the nine ball. Well done. Perfect. And with that shot, he is certainly in position now to get out on this first table in the first game. Johnny has great cue ball control. You notice that he's hit most of his shots with low English, which helps him to keep control of the cue ball. He's gotten perfect on the seven ball, straight in the side pocket. We'll bring the cue ball back over for a straight in shot on the eight. I think also a lot of amateur players worry only about making the ball. Too often they don't worry about where that cue ball is going to wind up. For sure, John, uh, the amateurs have a hard time controlling the ball as, as well as we do. And I think when they start to learn how to control the cue ball and how to play the shots the right way, their speed increases and they become a semi-pro. All that's left is the nine ball. Well done by Johnny Archer, the defending world nine ball champion, looking for his first U.S. Open title, and he has taken game one here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Welcome back to the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia. Game one of our first semifinal has gone to Johnny Archer. And Johnny Archer now working on taking game two. So a great start for Johnny Archer as we come back. He had put a good move early on Siegel to take the lead. He picks up the first two games. And now it is Mike Siegel trying for a combo, obviously. Kiss shot, John. That's a kiss shot. And it was a nice shot. He set himself up well for that shot. And he had to hit the six very thin to make the nine, and he did. It was a great shot. And a good start for him to get on the board and win his first. So we call it a kiss shot because he just hits the six, kisses it just slightly, and makes the nine ball with the cue ball. The important part there is that he doesn't scratch. And the important part for him to get on the board, Johnny Archer taking games one and two. Game three now going to Mike Siegel. Here is Johnny Archer again. Safety. Ooh, well done. It's a nice safety. He's put, he put Mike behind the six ball, but he, I think he let Mike see the five ball. If he can't see, the, I know he can hit the bottom rail and kick the five ball down table. And what he'll do, if he, can cut, if he can see the five, he'll cut it in the corner. If he can't see it, he'll kick behind it and send it down table. But I'm showing you the trail here, the position he's going to play. He'll hit the cue ball with low left hand English, bringing the five ball back to the, over to the side rail for the six ball. We're in game four. Remember, it's a race to 11. Going to follow the ball here. He's going to go back up and down the table. And he hit the six. He didn't want to hit the six. Made a nice shot on the five, but he's fortunate to get a shot on the six ball. Maybe not exactly the way he planned it, but it turned out <laughs> all right. No, if you'd asked him if he was going to play the six and the side next, he would have told you no. <laughs> but he's got a nice layout here. Straight in on the seven ball. And the eight ball is over on the other side of the table. So is that going to be a problem, that eight ball? No, I believe he's going to draw the cue ball back to the bottom rail. If he's straight in, he'll bring it all the way back to the bottom and back over for the eight. Well, you talked about placement of the cue ball. You can't do it much better than that. No, Mike handles the cue ball great. Playing very well this week. Remember, you have to have a good week to reach this point to make the <laughs> semifinal round. This to even the match. Siegel has done it. Takes two in a row. We're tied at two. We continue now from the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins. I'm John Sanders, and you're looking at a guy who's been here many times, but he's looking at a tough shot. Definitely. He's got a combination shot on his next shot. He's going to play position coming over to play either the combination or a kiss shot in this low left hand English on the cue ball. We're in game number five of this semifinal match, and is he going to get lucky? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Lucky shot. You won't see that too often. <laughs> and it leads to this. He's down to the nine ball to take the lead and win his third straight game. And you talked about how well he was playing during the week, obviously getting his act together again to win three in a row. Three. And he does it again in game six, looking at just the nine ball to build a two-game edge. That made it four to two. And certainly, Mike Siegel appearing to be in control of this semifinal match here in Chesapeake, Virginia. A little bit of pressure now on Johnny Archer. <laughs> yes, but it's still early, John. It's early in the match, a two-game lead. You know, don't forget, Johnny had a two-game lead, 2 nothing, And Mike has won the next four games, so and, you never know. And now trying to make it five in a row. He has done just that. Mike Siegel is on a roll, five straight, and now leads by three at 5-2. We move ahead to game number eight now. Very difficult shot. Cue ball along the rail. He's got to bring the cue ball back down table. He'll be hitting this very hard with low left-hand English on the cue ball. 
Very tough shot. And of course, it's right on that rail, too, which made it even tougher. Very tough. And the ball jawed in the pocket and came out. Very difficult shot. And this set Johnny up with a nice run out. Maybe this is the thing that will turn it around for Johnny Archer as he has just the eight and the nine to deal with. Shouldn't be any problem as he breaks the string of five consecutive victories by Mike Siegel and Johnny Archer about to get himself back on the board here at the Holiday Inn. And he does. Wins the eighth game. Moves back to within two. It's 5-3 now. And Johnny Archer winning that one. Now we move ahead to game nine. A kick shot. And he kicks the ball in. <laughs> what a great shot that was. Kicks the one ball in and gets position on the two ball. Very fortunate for Mike Siegel. And setting up the table nicely for Mike. He has only the eight and the nine to deal with. He's in good shape. Nice position. Good ball, ball, ball speed. Finishes it off, taking game nine, and once again resumes a three-game lead here. In the first of our semifinal matchups, a chance for him to move on if he can win here, and more to come in game ten. Nice shot. Good speed control. Wants an angle on the seven ball so he can bring the cue ball off the rail for the nine. Or the eight, excuse me, the eight ball. He's going to pop the cue ball over to the side rail for the eight ball. Very nicely done. Does he begin to play a little faster when he is hitting a lot of the shots? He's very confident, John, right now. Everything's going his way. He's, he's pocketing the balls. He's got good speed control. Seems very comfortable. It's going to be very tough to beat. This is to open up a 7-3 lead. Mike Siegel has done that. He's in control for now. And here is Johnny Archer trying to get back into this first semifinal. We pick it up now in game 11, and he's on a run. Makes a nice shot there. Brings the cue ball back out in the middle of the table. Has an angle on the eight ball. He'll be hitting the cue ball with low right hand. That's making the eight and bringing the cue ball back in the middle of the table for the straight-in shot on the nine ball. Johnny Archer, of course, familiar to many as the world nine ball champion. And later, here on ESPN, he'll be back to try to win that. And back in the match he comes, winning game 11. Now trails seven to four. After the first 11 games, Mike Siegel pretty much on a roll and pretty much in control. But as you can see, as we move on to game 12, now it's Johnny Archer's turn. Johnny's breaking the balls great. Um, there's no telling how many racks he'll run from here. <laughs> Another routine shot for Johnny on the nine ball. And he's right back in it. It's now 7-5 to five as we head for the 13th game of this semifinal. And not much you can do when your opponent's got the table, can you? Now, that's one thing that's different about billiards, pool, nine ball, than, than any other sports. When your opponent's at the table, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to just sit and watch. And he's got a nice out here, four in the corner, and he wants to get straight in on the seven, bring the cue ball back down table for the nine ball. He'll be hitting the cue ball low, bringing it backwards. And as you can see, his play here, very good, very strong, and puts him very much right back in the match. With this nine ball, it'll be seven to six. Now don't count Johnny Archer out. He's right back in it. It's a race to 11, 7 to 6. Mike Siegel still had the lead and still watching as we go to the 14th game. Johnny's still at the table. You know, earlier this year, he ran 13 racks in a match. Wow. Very tough shot. The cue ball's in the jaws of the pocket. You're going to have to the cue ball on the top. And he'll be, I don't think he'll be hitting this too hard. Very tough shot. Overcut the one ball. Got a little bit of a kiss, but not enough, and that will give Mike Siegel the chance he's been waiting and waiting for. He has a nice opportunity here to run the table, and he's on the seven now. Bring the cue ball back up for the eight ball. Drawing the cue ball two rails in the middle of the table. And obviously the miss, one of the few by Johnny Archer, opened the door for Mike Siegel in this 14th game. And when you've set so long, you get a chance you have to take advantage of it and make the most of it. Definitely. He's got a nice shot on the nine there. That's the kind you want to win the match. Eight, six. Now, as we head to game number 15, and again, it's Johnny Archer who was in control of game 15, putting more pressure on Mike Siegel. The cue ball control. Johnny's cue ball control is really great. Perfect speed for the nine inside. That made it eight, seven. Game 16 coming up for Johnny Archer. He's played very well. 
And as you can see, he continued to play well in the 16th game. Notice the angle on the eight ball. He wants an angle on the eight ball to bring the cue ball back down table for the nine ball. Here comes the cue ball. Perfect. Uses, uses two rails and puts himself in great shape to get even. This is an excellent comeback by Johnny Archer, but it's not surprising. It is 8-8 eight, eight after 16. The action will really heat up when we come back. Welcome back to the Holiday Inn. I'm John Sanders, along with Alan Hopkins. Johnny Archer has just won to even this match at 8-8, eight, eight, and I think this has been everything we thought it would be. He's breaking the ball. Great. Watch the cue ball and how hard he hits these balls. Cue ball's going near the middle of the table, giving himself a shot on the one ball. And he's, he's got a shot on the one ball, but it's a very tough shot. You have to cut the one ball very thin to make it in the corner, and I think he's probably going to play as safety. Bringing the cue ball over by the eight ball and putting the one ball down table by the three ball and the nine ball. Johnny has sized it up, and there's the angle that you expect that ball will take. Yes, I believe he's going to play safety, putting the cue ball by the nine and the five ball. I believe we made the three ball on the break. Speed is very important here. Trying to keep the cue ball right behind the eight ball. If you notice, there's a space between the eight and the two ball. He doesn't want to bring the cue ball between those two balls. The eight cue ball should go right behind the eight ball. Very good. Very well done. Does Mike Siegel even have a shot? Or is he hooked behind that eight ball? He has a shot. He can, he can mass the ball, I believe, here, and hit the one ball. And I can't tell if the four ball is on going for the combination or not. But notice the cue ball here going over behind the eight ball, and then the one ball going down table by the nine ball, and, or by the four ball, and stopping. He wanted to hit that a little bit harder, I believe. It almost looked like Mike was getting ready to set up for a Massé there. I don't think he has a choice for it. I think he's going to have to play a Massé because the two ball seems to be in the way of him kicking one rail and hitting the one ball. Well, you don't want to make a mistake that would cost you a ball in hand at this point. No, he's, he wants to make sure he hits the one ball, even if he has to hit it easy. Just hit the one ball and get a ball to the rail. He hit it easy, hit the four ball to the rail, and look at this, he made a safety. He got away with that. <laughs> That's how you win tournaments right there. He breathes a deep sigh of relief, too. <laughs> and Johnny Archer, who played a great safety, but now has work of his own to do. Mike was very fortunate there, but he made sure he hit the one ball, which is what he had to do. He's left the one ball right by the nine ball. I predict Johnny's going to hit the one ball by the five ball and bring the cue ball back down table behind the eight and two again. Leaving the one ball there. The cue has, ball's got to hurry. Yes, it does. And he left a shot. Now, this is a very tough shot, but I predict Mike's going to hit the ball very hard and try to cut the one ball in the corner and just let the cue ball go. He has to make sure he makes the one ball. So I think you'll hit him. Hit, I think you'll see Mike hit this very hard. And Mike happens to be a great shot maker. I predict he'll make the one ball. But I don't think he knows where the cue ball is going. I think he's just going to try and make the one ball. Well, he's thinking about his safety now. One thing I've always noticed about him, he loves to talk to himself and anyone else around <laughs> him when he's playing this. He'll, he sizes it up out loud. We call him the chirper. <laughs> he's going to play the one ball. Mike's he, a great shot maker. I, I predict he'll make the one. If he ever shoots it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big shot. If he makes the one, he should win the game. And a very important game it is. Remember, it's a race to 11, and these two players are tied at 8-8 eight, eight after 16 games. I think you're liable to see the cue ball travel a lot of rails on this shot. One, two, three. Look out. Four. Four rails and perfect for the two ball. If it slows down, slow down. Stop before it gets to the nine. <laughs> That's a great shot right there. Four He's covered a lot of area there. Definitely a great shot. He went four rails and got perfect position on the two ball. So now you think he has a chance to get out on this game. I'll make a prediction he gets out from here. Notice the cue ball, how far it travels. Doesn't touch another ball. That is amazing to me that you can move it around completely around the entire table and not touch another ball. And stop right there for the two ball. Now that's why he wins so many tournaments. That's why he's won this U.S. Open three different times. Mike would probably be considered the best shot maker on the Pro Tour today, I would think. Oh, wow. He drew the, see how far he drew the ball back for the four ball? That's a very difficult shot. You must hit the cue ball extreme low English, and bring the cue ball back perfect speed to hit the five and stop for the four. He has another shot. He's going to have to hit the cue ball hard and bring it up for the five. One, two rails, and in the middle of the table for the five ball. 
Now I'm, the table really opens up for him, though, doesn't it? I'll make a prediction here, John. I'll go out on the limb and say that he gets out this game. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously seen him do this before. <laughs> More like routine right now. He'll come out two rails for the six ball in the corner. Got perfect on the six ball. How important at this stage of the match, 8-8, eight, eight, is it to get at least a one-game advantage over your opponent, then get the break and try to keep that pressure on? This is a big game right here. Usually the person that wins the night, this game here goes ahead 9-8, usually wins the match uh, because he only needs two games, and the other player has to beat him 3-1 to win the match. So it's a big advantage from here. Bounce, he says, and it does. Yes, he wanted an angle. He wanted an angle so he could pocket the eight ball and bring the cue ball back over to the other side of the table for the nine ball. You know, I've noticed that in watching these tournaments that most of the professional players like yourself, you want an angle on every shot, basically. You don't like straight-in shots, right? Well, you need an angle to play position. See, nine ball is mostly angles. A big win in this game for Mike Siegel. He takes a 9-8 lead. Welcome back to the 1993 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship from the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, sanctioned by the Pro Billiards Tour, the governing body of professional pool. What an exciting semifinal match we have, 9-8. Mike Siegel taking the 17th game, and a one-game lead, he has the break. It's a big game, the last game. Let's see how he breaks the balls. Okay, he brought the cue ball back down table with the one ball. But he did not pocket a ball. So he hasn't helped himself at all. Might have helped Johnny Archer, however. Actually, he's, he's, he's made a good table for Johnny Archer, but he's got a tough shot to start out with because he's only got, an, if you can see where the two and four ball are, he's only got just enough room to put the one ball through there and make it in the corner. So he's going to have to play the one ball in the corner, come back out off the rail in the middle of the table for position for the two ball. Very tough shot. It's, very, it's a speed shot and accuracy all in one shot. Well, you might play a safety. You also may bring the cue ball back behind the three ball and put the one ball down table. And that's what he's decided to do is play safe. Notice how he, where he put the one ball. He wanted to put the one ball right by the nine ball so that if Mike Siegel was snookered behind the three ball and couldn't hit the one ball, Johnny could win the game very quickly by playing a one-nine combination. But Michael has... A shot at the one ball. He can see the one ball, so he'll play a safety, I believe. There's no way he could carry him off the one and make the nine? No, John, he can't make the nine on the shot. I don't believe he can. Uh, if, if he's going to try it, Johnny's going to call over a referee for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they're discussing right now. Uh, Mike's not going to play that shot. He's going to just try to play a safety. He'd be lucky if he hits the one ball here. It looks like the three ball might be in the way a little bit. It's going to be a difficult shot just to hit it. Here's the path he's going to play a safety on. He's going to hit the one ball to the bottom rail, bring the cue ball back over to the side rail, and lay it on the bottom rail and put the one ball down table. If he hits it the way he wants to. Not an easy shot. He'll be hitting the cue ball with low left-hand English. We've reached a very tense moment in this match with Siegel leading 9-8. It's a race to 11. He needs to win two to continue. He's undecided what to do. It's a very important game. 9-8. Mike wins this game. It's almost like winning the match because he'd need one game and Johnny had to win three in a row. But you know, as he goes kind of exasperated around the end of the table, he knows the opposite is true, too. If he makes a mistake here, it could cost him this game and might lead to him losing. He may match. not shoot again, John. <laughs> if he makes a mistake here, he may not shoot again. Well, that's been the way it was earlier when Johnny Archer would get hot and he wound up sitting for a long time while Archer was on the roll, just did not let him back on the table. He's going to play the safety that I mentioned, I believe. He's going to hit this low left. Well, very, very narrow path. The three balls there, and also the seven ball in the middle of the table is in his way, too. And the nine ball is very close to the one ball, so if he hits the nine ball first, it'll be a bad hit, and Johnny will get ball in hand. Of course, you know his brain is saying, yeah, I can, I can get it through that narrow opening, and then, wait a minute. From this angle, it looks like he can. Yes. Great shot. Great shot. He hit the eight ball, which helped him to keep the one ball down table. Look at how lucky he got here. Excellent shot. It was worth the wait as far as Mike Siegel was concerned. He sized it up four or five times before he finally made the shot that you called and the one he had to make. He's full of shots, I'll tell you. Right now, it looks like the two balls in the way 
of hitting the one ball. I can't tell right now, but if it isn't, he can play a safety, driving the one ball over to the side rail and bringing the cue ball back down table. Both players very cautious now because both know that one mistake and it could be lights out. He might be playing the one ball in the corner pocket. A carom off of the three ball. Looks like that's the shot he's going to play. I don't think he'll be hitting this really hard. Oh, nice shot. shot. <laughs> wow. Great shot. That's how you win championships right there. Unfortunately, Johnny, he made a nice shot, but the three ball came down and laid right up against the seven ball. If you can watch this, he makes the one ball off of the three ball. Now the three ball goes back down table with the cue ball. And of course, that's very tough to control. You're, you're concentrating so hard on just getting the carom and getting the shot in the pocket. Position on the three ball is what he's concerned about. He's going to go over to the side rail and back out in the middle of the table for the three ball stop. Okay. Now, if you notice, the four ball is over on the side rail. So he's, he's, his work is not done yet. <laughs> what a tough run out this is. If he gets on the four ball, he should be okay, but it's not going to be easy. He's going to play the three ball in the corner and bring the cue ball around two rails for the four ball. Be hitting it with center. Actually, center, left hand English. Actually forcing the cue ball around two rails for the four ball. And again, very deliberate at this point in the match because one mistake could be fatal. Great shot. Two rails and back straight in for the four ball. Very nice shot. At this point in the game right there, that's a crucial shot. He made the shot and he got perfect on the four ball. Do you foresee any other problems now as he tries to get out here? Well, he actually got two perfect on the four. He hit the three ball in the corner, come around two rails, and ends up straight in on the four. And now he's going to just roll the cue ball down gently with the five in the side. And now I don't see any problems. If he makes the five in the side, he'll come out off the rail with the six ball in the corner. That's what he's going over to look at now. He wants to be straight in on the six ball because the seven ball is in the middle of the table. He just wants to stop, roll off the rail for the five, off with the five, Straight in on the six. He's got a nice layout now, John. I'm going to go out on a limb here and make a prediction that he wins this game. <laughs> he'll play the six in the corner and he'll more or less stop there for the seven ball. If Allen is right and he does win, we'll be all even at nine in a race to 11. We talked about it at the very beginning, what a close match it could be and what a good match it would be, and it has been. He's going to draw the cue ball back for the eight ball on the side. Has a little angle on the eight ball. I believe he'll follow the eight ball, hitting the cue ball with high English and a little bit of left hand English to bring the cue ball off the rail. And setting up the nine. Left hand English, so you're bringing the cue ball down table for the nine ball. A little and bit of an angle. It's not a routine shot, but I guess the way he shoots him, it is routine. Well, he's got a little bit of work done. I mean, it's not, not an easy shot, John. You're correct, but I think he'll make it. This to tie the match at 9-9. Good shot. Johnny Archer has gotten even again. He got his opportunity and took advantage of it. So it is 9-9 as we go to the 19th game of this match. Now we get to see Johnny break the balls. He's going to try to keep the cue ball in the center of the table and bring the one ball back down table so he has a shot on the one ball. Johnny really breaks the balls hard. Wow, look at the cue ball. Stop dead perfect in the middle of the table. Watch the nine ball. The oh. nine ball almost went. <laughs> Hangs in the pocket. Can't get much closer than that. A good break and a good start to a crucial game. We're even at 9-9. One of these players wants to win two, and it's over. Notice the cue ball jumps up in the air, goes in the middle of the table, and stops. The one ball's down table. The nine ball starts rolling toward the corner, hangs in the pocket. Now, after the nine hangs there, Johnny's looking for the one ball. This is the kind of run out you'd like. <laughs> and that's how close it was to a nine ball on the break, which would have been the game. Now, the two balls down table with the nine ball. When a ball gets that close to the pocket, do you start thinking combination early? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. He's going to play the one ball. If he's straight in, he won't be able to draw it back down. If he's got an angle, he'll bring it over to the side rail and back down table for the two ball. Looks like he has a little bit of an angle. Not as much as he'd like, though. His concern right here is if he uses force draw on the one ball, his concern is worried about scratching in the side pocket. So he's going to take his time on this. 
I predict he's going to hit a low right hand. I should bring the cue ball back down the table for the two ball. Well, he oh. hit it hard and used a couple of rails. He did just the opposite. He forced the cue ball around two rails. He wants it to stop. <laughs> he's got a nice shot. That was a great shot. He hit that with center ball, right hand English, and forced the cue ball two rails around the table. Now he's got a combination 2 9, which I predict he'll make. Great shot. <laughs> The combination gives Johnny Archer the lead. 10-9. What a dramatic turn of events. And that nine that almost went on the break was the key for him Archer taking a quick game. Eagle. Nice combination. Hits the two ball perfectly into the nine ball. Hits it so good that he makes the nine ball and the two ball. Just for good measure, right? <laughs> it is 10-9. Johnny Archer will have the table when we come back. Welcome back once again to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship here at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake. And Johnny Archer now looking for victory. A great table to win the 19th game, and maybe he can lock it up in number 20. We'll see. He's got a great opportunity to, John. He's got a nice, he broke the balls great. He made two balls on the break. He's got a shot on the one ball. He brings the cue ball back down the table with the one ball. He's got a nice layout here. He's going to make the one in the corner, come off the rail for the two ball. Side pocket. And he's hitting a little easy. If you foresee any problems here, it looks like uh, the six and the eight are tied up a little bit there. He's got a problem right here. The two ball, he's going to have to go to the side rail, and he's got an angle on the two ball. He didn't want an angle on the two ball. He wanted to be straight in. And now his concern is he can go three rails with the cue ball, or he can go two rails and he has to be careful if he goes two rails coming behind the nine ball, or if he goes three rails, he has to be careful he doesn't come behind the seven ball. So I predict he's going to go three rails and try to bring it out in the middle of the table, and he's got to be very careful he doesn't end up behind the seven ball because he's going to have to hit this a little bit of low with left hand English to bring it around. He does not want to touch the nine ball. Speed is going to be very important here, how hard he hits the cue ball. Oh, I think that's a little too easy. Look out. And he hits the set. Oh, what a bad break for, for Johnny. What a good break for Mike. He snookered behind the seven ball. He hit that shot a little too easy, I believe. A little too much English on the cue ball. And now he's behind the seven. Oh, what a big turnaround this could be. He was trying to do as you diagrammed in the beginning, draw it all the way around off that other rail, but getting back out in the middle of the table as opposed to tucked away where he is. That's a bad break right there. He had to hit the seven perfect to get behind it. Now he's going to have to play, I don't even believe he can jump this. I believe he's going to have to play a kick shot on the four ball. He's going to have to go to a rail and hit the four ball. Too close to jump it. Yes. And I, I think I, Mike Siegel knows that he might have a chance here. <laughs> well, I think he knows that he's not going to jump the ball. So he's going to have to kick it. I, I think unless Johnny can jump it, I can't. It looks like it's too close to it. Yeah, it is a quandary for sure. He's looking to kick at it. Right now he's figuring the angle. He's taking half the distance between the four ball and the cue ball on the rail and he's going to hit the cue ball in the middle of the side rail the middle distance between the cue ball and the four ball if he hits between there he should hit the four ball what he's concerned about right here is scratching what Mike Siegel's concerned about is Johnny making the ball <laughs> two different views of the wow he shot. hits it that's a great shot look yeah. out oh my god wow. he got lucky <laughs> <laughs> he sure did very lucky. You saw the reaction from Mike Siegel. He couldn't believe it. I know he thought he was going to have a shot no matter what here. That's how important it is, John, to hit the ball. He hit the four ball, and he's left the four ball and the cue ball like this. That's, that's almost impossible to do, and he has done it. <laughs> well, the only shot that Mike really has is a, is a bank shot. Uh, I predict he's going to try to bank the four ball cross side, and he'll be hitting it hard, so he may try to luck another ball with it. Those are Johnny Archer's parents. Johnny Archer also just recently married. Who's more nervous, the parents or the player? <laughs> I think his wife Shannon's more nervous. <laughs> <than you. laughs> Boy, that's a, that's a nice break for Johnny. I, I believe he's going to hit this very hard. And it's, it's kind of hard to make this. He's going to have to hit it awfully thin. But he's going to be hitting the seven ball, too. He's going to try to hit the seven ball into the nine. And also try to make the four ball. Try to make something else beside the four ball. That's the angle. But boy, it's really tight, especially when that ball is so close. He could play a safety. He could play a double bank. Yeah, right. Blasting something here. 
He's going to blast it. <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing you can do. You just have to hit them hard. Let's see what balls he knocks around the table. Predict the four balls going to... He misses the... Wait. There you go. He makes the eight ball. <laughs> well, that works out. <laughs> That's Whatever why he, works. That's why he hit the shot hard, John. He, he got lucky and made the eight ball. <laughs> well, did he give himself a shot here? See no. Johnny Archer's reaction. No, he got a bad break. He doesn't really have a shot again. He's got, a, he's got another bank shot or he's got a safety. At least he's at the table. That's right. And this guy's not. I mean, no. that's the, the advantage that he has at this stage. Same shot. Trailing 10-9, <laughs> and he has the same shot, a little different distance, but he still doesn't have a shot. I don't know if he'll play at this time. I don't know whether he'll play uh, the, the four ball cross side or, or um, play a safety. I think he's better off playing a safety, putting the four ball down on the bottom rail and bringing the cue ball back down on the other rail and leaving a long shot for Johnny or possibly a schnooker behind the nine ball. Well, the way it's going for him, though, maybe you ought to just try and come off the rail and go for the nine, huh? Now, the speed is very important here. I think at this, this point in the game, he's going to play a safety, I think. Oh. Whatever he does, it's going to take a while, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no snap decisions, that's what you're saying, huh? No, it's a very crucial game. Born in Rochester, now lives in Baltimore. He could also bank the four ball down table and leave the cue ball right there behind the seven. Okay, he puts the four ball on the bottom rail, hits it perfect, right behind the six ball. Great shot. Well, that safety worked out very well for Siegel. Who will go ahead and analyze the shot himself on his way back to his seat. Well, Mike's not thinking too positive. He says, I'm going to lose from here. But the four ball is a big ball to hit. But to make it is different. I don't believe Johnny, you know, that's a tough shot to make. But I know he'll hit the ball. He'll go over and look at the side rail. He'll figure the angle at which he wants to hit the four ball. And he'll hit this with a high ball. He can only hit it high anyway. And he'll hit it pretty hard. He won't hit this easy. He'll hit the perfect speed to hit the four ball and try to bring the cue ball back down table and leave the four ball and the cue ball far apart. Of course, the risk here, if you leave him a shot at all, it might be over for this game. Oh, he almost made it. <laughs> but I think he's going to leave Mike Siegel something to work with. Very easy to work with. Matter of fact, this is a nice layout right here. The four ball's near the corner. He'll just play the four ball in the corner with a little high left in English. Bring the cue ball over for the six ball, straight in. Well, it's only fitting that it could end this way, right? <laughs> or set up a final game to decide this semifinal. And which of these players will move on? You've got to make Mike the favorite now. He's breaking the, he'll be breaking the balls if he wins this game. Uh, and Johnny knows that right now. He's got to get real fortunate to get a shot at the, ta at the table again. Mike's got his cue ball on the rail. He'll be hitting it high, bringing the cue ball off the rail, back out in the middle of the table for the nine ball. And the battle continues now. Mike Siegel looked like he might be dead in the water for a while, but he has battled back, and if he puts away this nine, we will go to a 21st and deciding game. How better for it to be than 10-10? Well, let's see how Mike breaks him. Now, if Johnny was breaking the balls, you never know what will happen. <laughs> Mike hasn't been breaking as well as, I'd, as well as he'd like to be breaking. I think he'll control the cue ball here, trying to keep it in the center of the table. Look out! No! Look no. out! <laughs> he did not leave it in the center of the table. He almost put it in the side pocket. Very fortunate, John. Johnny knows it, too. How much trouble is it being that close to the pocket for him? It's trouble. He, uh, he's right next to the lip of the pocket. He's lucky that the side of the pocket isn't in the way. But the two ball is down table by the three ball, and he's almost straight in on the one. He's going to have to hit this pretty hard. Bring the cue ball back up table for the two ball. Not an easy shot. And you look at the posture of Johnny Archer as he watches this, uh, you'd have to think that he thinks he might not get back on the table. I think he knows he's not going to. Uh, Mike, this is when Mike really shines. Uh, the last game, when he gets a shot, he's usually out. So I'm going to make a prediction that he runs out this rack. Uh, even though he looks like he's a nervous wreck, he just keeps pocketing balls. <laughs> Uh, his, his heart's probably going a mile a minute right now. And if you listen to him, you'd think he has no shots at all. <laughs> and he's got a nice layout. 
He's going to, if this is a tough shot because he's elevated over six foot, he has to make sure he doesn't touch it. And he executed it perfect. Great shot. And it looks pretty nice from here on out. Oh, yeah, he's got the three ball. He's got the three ball straight in, it looks like. But now he's, now he's, this is a difficult shot. He's elevated over the six ball and has to hit the cue ball high and hard enough to come back out table from the three ball. But he did it. And now the four ball is over by the side pocket. And again, on that long reach, he has to make sure he does not touch or move another ball. That would be fatal. I'm surprised he doesn't shoot this righty. He's lefty, but he, he plays very well righty. But he's going to use a bridge. This is something we have not seen much of. The players do not use that bridge very often. And he's perfect, I think. Little angle on the four ball. Now, now he's got a nice table. <laughs> He made the difficult shots that he needed to, and you see the almost look of concession, if you will, on the face of young Johnny Archer. I think it's disappointment, John. The last game Johnny was supposed to get out, when he went two, three rails and got behind the seven ball, that cost him the match. And it may, unfortunately, it cost him the whole tournament. But now Michael's got a nice layout. He's got an angle on the eight ball. This is what you'd like to have to win a tournament right here. And what a great match this has been. Right down to the wire, 10-10. The first to 11 wins, and it looks like that's going to be Mike Siegel. This is what you want to finish off the match, and Johnny Archer knows that he had his chances. But it is Mike Siegel who will advance to another semifinal because he has eliminated Johnny Archer. Job well done by Mike Siegel, who's won this tournament three times and still in the hunt for number four. 11 to 10 is the final. Johnny Archer is finished, and Mike Siegel will go on. But a hand for both players, a tremendous match. Mike Siegel wins it 11 to 10 over Johnny Archer. What a match it was. Went right down to the final game. And Johnny Archer, one mistake might have cost him, but standing by now is Alan Hopkins with both players. Okay, Johnny, I made a prediction 10-9 when you were breaking the balls that you were going to break and run out, and you got on the two ball, and you got a little funny. The four ball was near the pocket. Uh, do you feel you could have, would have done it different, or do you feel you did the right thing, just got a bad break? Well, um, the way I looked at it, I, I knew there was a, two or three things that could have went right. Uh, that was the only thing that could have went wrong. I believe I would have done the same thing if I had the shot again. So you think you would hit a little harder ne next time? Maybe a little harder, or maybe a little more spin or something. Okay, thanks, Johnny. Well, here he is. I didn't think you were getting to the table again, to tell you the truth. When you switch sides, when you switch sides breaking the balls, and you didn't make a ball, I said, I, that might cost Mike the match. And then I noticed when it was 10-10, you went to the other side of the yeah, table. You feel that's the one you the match? Yeah. Well, in the beginning of the match, I broke right from here. I made two or three balls a couple times in the beginning, and all of a sudden, I started slowing down. And he broke over here, and a couple times, he didn't make the corner ball. So I really wasn't, you know, too concerned about it. But I broke over here once. I said, I might as well go right back no. to where I began. No. And... Luckily, a ball went in, and I had a pretty easy run out, even though I made it look tough. <laughs> what about the match? You, you left you safe on the four ball, and you tried to bank it, and then you left him safe. I mean, that, I guess that's what made the match go the other way. Yeah, well, I mean, I got real lucky. I tried to bank the... F I, didn't, I couldn't even hardly play safe. It was tough to do that, so I figured maybe I'll try and bank it or may go two times across. I came around, I kicked the eight in, and still left with a tough shot, but I hit the safe perfect, and I, I rolled up behind the six ball, and... Uh, you know, well, that's just the breaks of the game. I kind of prayed and things well, worked out. Well, Mike, you broke the balls, you ran out the final match, and good luck in the semifinals. All right, thanks a lot, A Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, ESPN presents the 1993 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Coming up today, it's semifinal number two, matching three-time U.S. Open champion Mike Siegel against a newcomer, a new face, if you will, at least as far as reaching the final round, Tony Ellen. That's the matchup that we have. Welcome to Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins. I'm John Sanders. Mike Siegel just barely getting past Johnny Archer to set up this match. Yes, and he's playing great, by the way. I've been watching him play. Every time the balls are open, Mike seems to run out, and that's the way he used to play years ago, so he's going to be very tough to beat. Let's talk a little bit about his opponent, Tony Ellen. Maybe not so many people have heard of him as Mike Siegel. <laughs> well, they'll hear from now. I, I know Tony Allen very well. Hurricane Tony, they call him. Tony, you have to watch his break. He's very explosive. He hits the ball awfully hard. And he makes like three balls on the break, and he's playing six ball, not nine ball. <laughs> so he can put a lot of racks together. So he's going to be very tough to beat. He is also a very deliberate player, and we will be governed by a 30-second clock and is always in the semifinal. It will be a race to 11. The winner here advances to the championship round. So this is very important as these two players search 
for U.S. Open Championship. We'll have it for you, the lag for the opening break. The match between Mike Siegel and Tony Allen is coming up right Welcome back once again to the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins. I'm John Sanders. This is the second semifinal. If you were with us earlier on ESPN, you saw Mike Siegel with a dramatic victory over Johnny Archer. Now he's matched up against Tony Ellen as these two players try to make it back through the loser's bracket for a shot at the championship. And the opening lag, done well by Tony Ellen. We mentioned that a lot of people may not know a lot about Tony Ellen, but you do. Yes, we call him Hurricane Tony Ellen. You'll see why in a couple minutes. <laughs> There's the break you were talking about. He powered the balls all over the table while leaving the cue ball in the middle. But he didn't make any. He made a ball on the break, didn't he? No, he didn't. He left Mike Siegel. A nice shot on the one ball, and the two balls by the one ball. So Michael pocket the one ball in the corner, try to keep the cue ball right around the same area as the one ball for the two ball next. Mike Siegel originally from Rochester, New York, now makes his home in Baltimore, Maryland. And I think he's let the cue ball get a little bit away from him. Might have taken him away from his shot at the two. Yes, he doesn't have a shot on the two ball. He's going to have to, he's going to be forced to bank the two ball or play a safety. That's the kind of mistake that you're not used to seeing Mike Siegel make. He'll play a safety here. I believe he's going to hit the two ball thin and bring the cue ball down to the bottom. No. He's cutting the two ball in. No, he played a safety. A little kiss off the eight tucks the cue ball down at this end of the table. I think he might have a shot at that ball, though. Yes, he wasn't successful with his safety. He actually hit the two ball a little too easy or a little too hard. He left the two ball by the pocket and left Tony see, see the two ball with the cue ball. Now, Tony has a tough shot after the two ball if he doesn't bring the cue ball back down table for the three ball. This is the opening game, the race to 11, the second of our semifinal matches. Extreme draw, he's going to hit the cue ball with Bringing the cue ball back, hitting the five, and stopping there for the three ball. That's a good shot. He's got a shot on the three ball. Just enough room to make the three, it looks like. Pocket the three and come around two rails back in the middle of the table for the four ball. Hurricane Tony Allen, 28 years old, from the state of South Carolina. He's not won on the Pro Billiards Tour, but that does not mean he has not won some tournaments. He's long overdue. <laughs> he makes the three ball, two rails. Come on, back up. And he'd like to have hit that a little bit harder, John. Although he still has a shot on the four ball. Shot that he should make. All he has to do is make the four ball, and the five ball is right by the side pocket, so it'll be okay. He wanted to bring the cue ball back up in the middle of the table. How much more pressure is there on him knowing that he has reached this stage of a pro tournament for the very first time and as it turns out it's a dramatic tournament the u.s open well actually john uh tony has beaten all the top players at one time or another so i, I think the pressure i don't think is going to be a big factor here because he's used to beating uh every player on the pro tour already so it's just if he can perform and get a little fortunate break the balls well and be consistent like he's been playing the whole tournament he should be able to uh win the match He's got a nice layout here. Should be able to get out here, and it was a mistake on the safety that just might cost Mike Siegel this first game. But Tony will leave himself an angle on the eight ball so he can come up for the nine ball. A little bit of an angle. He'll pocket the eight ball and just come up in the middle of the table for the nine ball. So the eight and the nine should go in this same pocket, and that should be enough to give Tony the first game of this race to 11. And dramatically... In the other semifinal, the match between Archer and Siegel went right down to that 21st and deciding game. But game one now goes to Tony Ellen. He has the lead over Mike Siegel. Tony Ellen took game one of this second semifinal, had the break on game two, but turned the table then over to Mike Siegel. And Siegel using the opportunity, hopefully, to try to get back in it, but no. He attempted a, a jump shot there. He used a small cue with a jump cue, but he hit the six ball first, leaving Tony a nice layout on the table. And Tony able to take advantage of that in this second game. See good position for the nine as 
He set up to get out of this table and take a 2-0 lead coming around the nine. Nicely done. Playing with a lot of confidence. Very smooth stroke right now. And that made it 2-0. Tony Allen had the lead over Mike Siegel, who was just a little bit shaky here at the beginning. <laughs> Mike seems a little nervous. It's unusual for him. Of course, he acts nervous all the time, doesn't he? <laughs> Notice the break. Oh, he got a bad break there. He stopped the cue ball in the middle of the table and got kissed in the side pocket by the three ball. The scratch on the break. In game three. Turned it back, ball in hand. And that's the key, of course, for good players. That can be like the end of the game. Well, Tony got a bad break there. He actually broke the balls great and stopped the cue ball dead center of the pocket and, the, I mean, on the table, and the three ball come over and kicked the ball in the corner, in the side pocket. And now Michael has a nice layout. He'll play the two ball and come around two rails for the three ball in the side pocket. Little center, right-hand English, little spin on the cue ball. Game three of this semifinal, the race to 11. Tony Allen has a 2-0 lead. Mike doesn't seem so confident. Uh, of course, we saw a lot of that in the match with Johnny Archer in the other semifinal in that he shook his head negatively about almost every shot. He'll bring the cue ball in the middle of the table in the circle for the five ball. And although we didn't keep your circle there, I'm sure that's where it is. <laughs> Notice the open bridge. Playing the five ball, he'll come back up table for the six ball. One rail. Perfect. A little, he's got an angle on the six ball. I believe he'll bring the cue ball over to the side rail and bring it back over for the seven. Ball. He does. Seven and the eight in the same pocket? Yes. After he comes off the rail, I assume. Two John, rails. you sure you haven't played pool before? <laughs> <laughs> well, not like this. <laughs> That's why I ask you amateurish questions from time to time. There's the important shot. Two rails, back down table for the nine ball. He does not want the cue ball to lay on the rail. Nope. It's a little too close for his liking, but knowing a the way he can play should not be a problem for him to take game three. He does. Mike Siegel wins his first game of this second semifinal. Tony Ellen has a two to one lead as we head now for game four. And in game four, we look at that and Tony Ellen now. Looks like a safety. That's a great shot. Hit the one very thin. Bring the cue ball behind the five ball and shoot. Oh, boy, did he ever. That's a great shot. And I think the average player would have scratched trying to do that shot. I don't think the average player would have even tried that, to tell you the truth, That's John. That's true. That, that was a very tough thing. Thin cut, and Mike hits the one ball, cuts it in Look the corner pocket. <laughs> Watch out. That's a great shot. Mike Siegel makes the ball. Yeah. We're in game four, and Mike Siegel is down two to one. Unfortunately, he's made the one ball, and he's left himself a tough cut on the two ball, but he kicks two rails at the one, hits at the perfect angle to cut it in the corner pocket, and the cue ball comes down two rails for a tough cut on the two and sets up this for Mike. And he was able to handle the rest of the table. You see him getting out on the eight. That set up the nine. And this for Siegel to take game four and get even. So it was 2-2. Mike Siegel and Tony Allen hooked up. In the second semifinal, more to come right after this from Virginia. Welcome back once again to the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm John Sanders along with Alan Hopkins, who has won this U.S. Open twice. Here's a guy who's won it three different times and looking for number four. He's got even at two. And on the break, he does. He makes two, didn't he? Yes, he was lucky on the break. He let the cue ball get away from him, and he's fortunate the cue ball stopped in the middle of the table. He went two rails and stopped the cue ball in the middle of the table. I think that's what Tony's laughing about, uh, that he was lucky. That now, does not normally happen, right? No, it doesn't. Um, you try to stop the cue ball in the middle table without touching a rail. But he's got a nice shot on the two ball, but his concern is hitting the ball below the two ball. So he's going to try to come out in the middle of the table, go over to the side rail, and back out for the four ball. And believe me, he will take his time in sizing it up. Very delicate shot. He does that a lot. He'll, he'll line up the shot and kind of like a golfer, then he backs <laughs> away. Hits the seven ball, comes back out, and he's left himself 
a straight-in shot in the corner on the four ball. It looks like he's got enough room to get past the five. Got a little angle on the four ball. He's not straight in. He'll hold the cue ball up, a little left hand English on the cue ball. Playing the five ball next. Great shot. Well done. That is a beauty. Notice the angle, John. He wants an angle on the five ball because the six ball is back down table. So he's going to hit the low right hand English, making the five ball coming off the rail with the right hand English, bringing the cue ball back down table for the six ball. Once you've made your decision on what angle and how you want to approach the shot, do you block out the other balls that are there and only focus on your lane? Actually, Mike's playing three balls ahead, the six, seven, and eight. He's looking to see where the eight is so he knows what kind of angle he wants on the seven ball. He's left himself an angle on the seven ball now to come back out for the eight ball in the middle of the table. Bring Mike, the cue ball. trying to win his third straight game. Oh, look at that English. High left hand English, bringing the cue ball two rails in the middle of the table for the eight ball. And now he has an angle on the eight ball. He's going to be forced to go to the bottom rail with high English, back down table for the nine. This is a speed shot. How hard he hits it depends where the cue ball goes. And that's perfect speed. Give himself a little bit of an angle on the nine to win three straight here at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake. Mike Siegel looked like a man who's stocking number four in the U.S. Open nine ball championship play. He has taken a three to two lead over Tony Allen. Oh. And he scratched on the break in game six. He hasn't been breaking well. He's letting the cue ball get away. You know, last time in the semifinal match against Johnny Archer, he changed sides of the table from which he elected to make his break. He's having a problem with the cue ball, controlling the cue ball. Now, Tony's got a nice layout here if he can get the cue ball down. <laughs> He's going to play the one ball on the side. He had and to put it down without touching another ball, too. He'd give it right back to his opponent. Yes. Wants to follow the ball for the two ball. Wants an angle on the two. And the three ball is down by the left-hand corner. So he'll just play the two ball and come off the rail with the three ball. Ooh. Almost left it out too far. Almost cut it just a bit too much. He hit it good speed. That was pocket speed. And the two ball went. And he's got a nice layout now. He's going to play the three ball in the corner, and then the four ball should come out for the four in the side. And when you say pocket speed, does that mean even if you miss hit it a little bit, you still get enough of the pocket that it's going to go? Yes, if he hits it the right speed. He's really controlling the cue ball great. He's got an angle on the four ball, come down for the five. He'll make the five and six ball in the same pocket after he pockets the four in the side. Ranked to number 11 on the tour. Former Michigan State champion. His cue ball control is really, really good. He's handling the cue ball nicely. He'll play the six ball and come off the rail just a little bit for the seven ball, a little angle he wants. I know you at the beginning of this match talked about his power off the break. Is that the thing about him that concerns you the most? Or if you're sizing up someone as your opponent, what do you think of first when you think of him? Tony's got a devastating break. He hits the balls as hard as anybody. He controls the cue ball, and then he gets out. He just keeps pocketing the balls. <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get out here. Handles the eight. Leaves himself in good shape for the nine. This to even the match. At 3-3 three, three here at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake. And well done by Tony Allen. Three straight for Mike Siegel, but Allen evens it at three all. This guy who's won it three times and looking for number four. I'm John Sanders. With me is Alan Hopkins, who's won it twice. And there is the blast <laughs> of the break that you talked about. What a break. That's a perfect break. But he hasn't made a ball. <laughs> so that makes it not perfect, I guess. That's the only problem with it. He didn't make a ball. But unfortunately, he hit them hard. He controlled the cue ball. Notice the cue balls slow down and stop near the center of the table. The one ball's down table with the cue ball. He just didn't pocket a ball. And that's a tough break for Tony. And a good break for Mike. He's got the one ball and the two ball very close to each other, so he just pocket the one. Position on the two will be easy, but his concern is the three ball. Siegel won three games in a row after falling behind 2-0. He took games 3, 4, and 5 to take a 3-2 lead. Right now his concern, John, is his shirt. He can't touch a ball. If he touches the ball, it'll be a foul. And that means ball in hand for Tony Ellen. Yes. Maybe he ought to think about wearing smaller shirts. <laughs> Well, Mike likes to wear a baggy shirt when we play. Now, Mike got an angle on the two ball to get position on the three ball. He's going to go two rails, 
Low left, low right hand English, bringing the cue ball around in the circle for the three ball. Doesn't want to come down too far because of where the four is. And speed is very important, and it looks like he's hit it perfect. That's a great shot right there. Might be the shot that opens up this table for him. He didn't want too much of an angle because the four ball's on the bottom rail, so he's going to follow the three ball down for the four ball. Very nicely done. Wants to come off that rail a little bit, giving him a little bit of room. Right there was a great example of cue ball control. Uh, most players would have gotten bad on the three and had a problem getting to the four. Mike hit the shot perfect. He's got an angle on the four to come up for the five in the side pocket. He is controlling the cue ball so well. This is the seventh game. We're even at three. He ran this table perfect. If he gets out, which I'll make a prediction, John. I'm going to go out on the limb here. And <laughs> there you he go. Gets out. <laughs> Straight in on the seven. He'll come down for the eight ball. He really looks determined, doesn't he, John? Yes, he does. He's got that determined look back that we saw in the match in the first semifinal against Johnny Archer. The winner of this match still has more work to do the way this championship is set up. Earl Strickland is waiting for the winner. Well done there. It's 4-3 now as Mike Siegel takes the lead in semifinal number two. Now we move on to game eight. And going to the bridge was Tony Ellen. Tony will hit this easy. Playing his safety, going to the bottom rail, and just touching the one, trying to leave him safe from hitting the the one ball and he hits it full in the face he didn't want to hit it full in the face but i don't believe he's left a shot for mike anyway <laughs> well he's going to shoot at it it looks like he has an angle where he can't make it but apparently he can because he's shooting it he's going to play a combination the one down table i believe that's the nine ball hanging in the corner pocket but mike, this shot could win the game for him yes michael hit this shot pretty hard i believe very difficult shot take a run at it Oh, that's good. Great shot. Beautifully done. That gives Mike a 5-3 lead. A very tough shot, but rack him up because Siegel has won again. Perfect to hit this ball. Goes right down the rail and pockets the nine. That's a great shot. And as we've seen him do on other combinations, he makes the other ball as well. <laughs> Just a little icing on the cake. And a 5-3 lead now for Mike Siegel over Tony Ellen. But in game number nine, you can see who has the table right now. What's the situation here for Tony Ellen? He has just enough room to make the five ball. He has to hit it perfect. And he does. That's a great shot. <laughs> He's really playing well. Have a nice layout. Now the six ball, you got perfect speed on the six to go in the side pocket. He'll leave a little angle on the eight ball. The seven is off the table already. Gave himself an angle so he could pocket the eight and come down and pocket the nine in the same pocket. And this to make it 5-4. The fourth game goes to Tony Allen, 5-4, as we head to game number 10 here at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake. And back in game 10, here comes Mike Siegel again. Tough shot. Has to play the four and go around three or four rails for the five ball. Not an easy shot. I believe he'll hit this pretty hard, bringing the cue ball around, around the whole table. And he overcut the ball. Not an easy shot. He, he doesn't want to scratch, though. Oh. That's the problem. And looks what down at this end. He scratched because he overcut the four ball. If he didn't overcut the four ball, he would have never scratched. He wasn't even supposed to be close to the side pocket. Well, that sets up a possible combination for Tony Ellen. This is the kind of shot you'd like for the whole match. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw Siegel win one on a combination earlier, and that is an easy combination for Tony Ellen. And the good news for him is after 10 games, we're all even. But here was the key shot, as far as Mike Siegel was concerned, when he overcut it. Yes, and that took a different path for the cue ball, forcing him to scratch in the side and leaving Tony the combination on the nine. And the combination on the nine gets Tony even. We're tied at 5-5 here. And we After the first 10 games of this semifinal number two, it's all even between Mike Siegel. Wow. <laughs> Blasting the cue ball into the pocket is...
Stoney Ellen. Boy, is he that, powerful. Did you see that break? Cubo jumped about two feet off the table. And actually, he got it away from him because he scratched in the corner. But sometimes he hits it hard like that, and the cue ball jumps up the middle table and stops. This time it didn't stop. It went into the pocket. Now, this really can open the door for your opponent. Definitely. Michael has seven balls. I think there's seven balls on the table. Did Tony make two, two balls or one? Anyway, he's got a nice layout, got ball in hand, and Tony's a little frustrated. Is Tony the most powerful breaker on the tour, would you say? I'd say he's one of them. Tell me a little bit about the difference between the stick that you use to break and the one that you use to play the game. Usually our break cues are a little lighter than the cue we play with. Gives shorter us, too, right? Gives us more whip action. No, I, I don't believe they're shorter. Oh, they're the same, same length. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe Mike did that. Mike had ball in hand and, and snooking himself behind the five ball. Something I haven't seen Mike do in a long time. Now I'm sure Mike is as disbelieving as we are. Normally, he would have come off the rail and given himself a shot, right? Yes, he had ball in hand. To have ball in hand and leave yourself bad position on the next ball is something you rarely see Mike do. But it happened, and now he's got a situation where he's going to have to either play a masse or a jump shot. I think he's too close to the ball to play a jump shot. He doesn't like to jump the ball, so I think he's going to play a masse. Oh, no, he's jumping the ball. Oh. He jumped it right off the table. <laughs> and Made the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he made the ball, but unfortunately the cue ball is off the table, and that certainly turns this game to the advantage of Tony Ellen because he'll have ball in hand. Look how high he gets the ball up in the air, but he hits the two ball off center. That's what forces the cue ball to go off the table, leaving a nice run out for Tony. Tony Ellen now with a chance to take the lead, this 28-year-old South Carolinian. He wants an angle on the five ball. He does not want to be straight in. Gives himself an angle, perfect. He'll play the five ball in the corner with low right hand English, bringing the cue ball back out in the middle of the table for the six ball. Perfect speed. Another angle. Low left hand English this time, bringing the cue ball back out in the middle of the table. And in good shape for the eight and the nine. That's all that remains before Tony Ellen takes the lead. He got a break when the cue ball went off the table on the jump shot by Mike Siegel, and you see his reaction. Hello. <laughs> it's now 6-5 after 11 games, and Tony Ellen, trying to win his first professional tournament, has the lead. Very, and Mike Siegel knows he's got some work to do. Very rarely you'll see Mike do that, and he's not happy about it. There's that break. One is in. Two. Well, you almost have to clear the decks when he's doing the break, huh? He made three balls on that break, John. One must have fell while we weren't looking or something. Well, it's like you said, when he does it that way, it makes a six ball, not nine ball. What a big advantage. He's going to bank the four ball here. Look, he only has to make six balls to win the game. He's got a nice bank here. If he makes the bank, he'll have a shot on the five. Perfect. It's a good bank player also. The three ball, the three balls off the table, it's the four ball that's next. Sorry, I miscalculated that. I thought the five ball was the next ball. The four ball's on the table. So he's left himself a little bit of a tough shot on the four ball. He'll have to roll the cue ball in and then come back on the other side of the table for the five ball. The five ball very close to that side pocket on the far side. So he needs to come back over there. He's really pocketing well. He's, the ball goes right in the pocket, doesn't touch the rail. Any problem here? Little angle on the five ball, there shouldn't be any problem. Come over to the other side of the table for the seven ball on the side. And the eight ball's along the rail. I believe he'll come try to get straight in on the eight. Go down table, and back up for the eight, straight in the corner pocket. Put a little left hand English on the cue ball. Notice the angle, giving himself straight in. He'll play the eight in the corner and stop right there for the nine ball in the side pocket. And I follow up on the comment you made about pocketing the balls. I mean, most of his are dead center. Yes. That one, of course, you need to use a little rail. This to open up a two-game lead. Oh, Tony Allen is playing very well right now, and he knows it. He's got some confidence. He has taken four games in a row and leads seven games to five. Remember, it's a race to 11. Here comes that powerful break again. <laughs> you almost want to duck if you're in the first row. Or hold your ears. <laughs> he 
made one. Is that all? Yes, made one ball, but he's got a nice shot on the one ball. The cue ball's along the rail, but I think he's okay because he has an angle on the one ball. If he was straight in, he'd have a problem. But the two balls is concern here. He's going to have the cue ball perfect speed, hitting the one ball and coming off the rail with the cue ball, making sure he does not get behind the three ball. I don't think he'll hit this too hard. Unless he's uncomfortable hit rolling it easy, he'll hit it harder and make sure he comes up table for sure. Well, he is on a roll right now. He's one four straight. He hit a little extra hard to make sure he gets down the table. That's a smart choice. Made sure he had a shot on the two ball. Wasn't taking any chances of getting behind the three ball. But now he's got a little bit of a touchy shot because he's going to have to do something with the cue ball to make sure he doesn't scratch in the side pocket. Unless he's going to cut the two ball in the side pocket. I was going to say, wouldn't that be the other option to go to the side pocket? Yes. But I think he's going to play this in the corner. Because of where the four is. Oh, no, he played it in the side and he hits the eight. And I didn't like his choice there because he's left himself no pocket for the three ball unless he plays the three in the side pocket. He's going to be forced to play it in the side because the five ball is blocking the corner pocket. I think he decided just to make sure he makes the two ball. He's got a two-game lead. He wants to make sure he stays at the table. And he's going to cut the, the three ball in the side pocket. And he'll probably keep the cue ball down table for the four ball by making a carom. The one thing I've not seen him do as much as some of the other players is go around and actually point with the cue at the angle he wants. Obviously, whatever his technique is, it's worked out very well. <laughs> this is a good shot. Notice he hit the eight ball to keep the cue ball down table with the four ball. And he'll need a bridge right now. I don't think he can reach this without a bridge. The five ball is in nice position. If he makes the four ball, he should have no problem with the five ball. Just needs to come off that rail. This will be center ball. He'll make the four ball, come back down table for the five ball, probably go to the bottom rail and back up. Did he overcut it? Oh, oh he made it. <laughs> Thought for a moment he had overcut that shot. It was scary. <laughs> I'm sure his heart was beating a bit, but he left himself in good shape. And he doesn't have a pocket for the six ball. What Tony's going to do, notice how thin he cuts the four ball here. Just catches the corner of the side pocket, rims the hole, and goes in. Very lucky. <laughs> but he's got a nice situation here. The five ball straight in the side pocket. And all he's going to have to do is stop the cue ball or even draw it back an inch or so and play a kiss shot on the nine ball. He'll play the cue ball, that's what he's looking at right now, the cue ball off the six ball and try to pocket the nine ball, and he'll play a safety at the same time. Right. So if it doesn't work out, he'll still leave himself in good shape. Well, if, if he misses the nine ball, if you notice, let's see what he does, but if you notice, what I predict he's going to do is carry him the cue ball off the six ball and put mm -hmm. the six ball back down table, as so, and leave the cue ball behind the eight ball. So if he misses the nine ball, Mike won't have a shot anyway. Here comes the carom. Nine ball goes. <laughs> and that's the game. Exactly what I said he would do. Eight to five now in five straight games won by Tony Ellen. Hurricane Tony is blowing him away right now. Notice the cue ball. It stops right there behind the eight ball. So if he missed the nine, he would have left him safe. A commanding lead, if there is such a thing, for Tony Ellen over Mike Siegel. It's eight five. Two outstanding professionals locked up here. Tony Ellen with a very strong showing. But now it is Mike Siegel trying to get back in it here in game number 14. Got a nice uh, table set up here. Four balls by the side pocket. You just pocket the three ball in the corner and come out for the four ball. Wants an angle on the four ball to come to get on the five ball next. So it'll come up a little higher on the four. Perfect. First, the one thing that we have seen during this match, as opposed to the one against Johnny Archer in the other semifinal, is he's made a few mistakes that are uncharacteristic of his type of play. Yes, I'm surprised at a uh, few of the mistakes he's made. He hasn't been breaking the balls well, and he made a few cue ball errors where I usually don't see Mike do that. He's normally very methodical. Oftentimes, as we have seen, will back away from a shot. Draws it back off the rail. Don't count him out of the match, John. He, <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> you never know what Mike's going to do. He's liable to get a barrage here and run four or five racks. 
got he's got no pocket for this. He can't go over to the right hand corner pocket, so he's going to draw the cue ball back for the seven ball in the left hand corner. Takes care of the six, and that gives him an angle on the seven. Perfect. He should make the seven and the eight in the same pocket. Now he's looking to see if he's going to hit the eight down or if he's going to draw over to the side rail. I believe he's going to just follow the cue ball down. Nice and easy. Okay. He brought it out to the side rail. Okay. If you don't have to touch a ball, you're better off not touching it. That can change things, right? <laughs> Michael, follow this ball. Two rails back out in the middle of the table for the nine ball. Perfect. Slow up. Okay. This to break the run. Five straight games won by his opponent, Tony Allen, but Mike Siegel back on the winning side. Back within two. It's now 8-6. And as you said, never count Mike Siegel out. Let's see what his break is doing here as we move to game 15. Got to control the cue ball. He stopped the cue ball on the middle table. And did he make a ball? Almost. Oh, five balls hanging up. <laughs> it is kind of ratty to him. It's very, very close, but not enough of the pocket to drop. He wouldn't have had a shot on the one ball anyway. The one ball's on the bottom rail. So now Tony's forced with a situation. Does he bank the one ball into the five? I believe he will because he has protection there with the nine ball. He's going to hit it hard because he wants to get a shot. He's going to have to bring the cue ball around the table for the one ball next. He may pocket both balls in one shot. I was going to say, he may make two or three. <laughs> I believe he'll hit it hard, though. He does. Makes the five ball. The one ball comes out. Perfect. That's a great shot. <laughs> Certainly helps set up the table for him now. He's got a half a pocket here. The seven ball sticking out a little bit from the corner pocket. I think he's going to look at it. I think he'll play the one ball in the corner. And if he touches the seven, he could still make the one ball. His concern now is speed, getting the cue ball off the rail and for the two ball next. And this is an important game for him. It would give him a 9-6 lead. And I've heard you talk before about how important it is to get <laughs> to that number nine in game. For sure. Okay, the two ball... Right in the left hand corner, in the top right hand corner, then bring the cue ball back out toward the middle of the table. A little hard, be careful. Okay, notice he was going toward the side pocket. He wants to make sure he does not scratch. Not at this point. The scratch would definitely cost you the game. I think we're also in the stage of the match where a scratch might cost you the match <laughs> itself, too. There's a nice shot. He forced the cue ball over to the side rail and back out in the middle of the table. Does he shoot harder? on an average than, than some of the players for, for most of his shots? Or is it just my imagination? It seems like he's stroking the ball harder, but I, I believe it's just the way his actions are. He's hitting the ball uh, very... He hits the ball very with a lot of um, authority when he strikes the cue ball. And he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. It's perfect on the six ball. Straight inside, he'll stop right there for the seven ball. Now, how is he going to get back to the eight? Low left hand English. Bring the cue ball back out. Probably bring it right up by the side pocket. Perfect. Just like that. <laughs> the eight and the nine to assume a commanding nine six lead in this semifinal. Looking forward to a shot at his first tournament title on the professional billiards tour. He would have liked to got a little bit better on the nine ball. He's left himself an angle on the nine ball and he really didn't want this type of angle. Tony's been pocketing balls so well all week, I think that he should have no problem. Good shot. Well stroked and well played. So game 15 goes to Tony Ellen. He has the lead 9-6 here. Come back to the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins. I'm John Sanders, and here is the power breaker. Wow. <laughs> Notice he's drawing the cue ball back to the bottom rail, not taking any chances of scratching in the side pockets. He made the one ball in the side, and he doesn't have a shot on the two ball. The seven ball blocks him from banking across side, and the six ball blocks it from banking across corner, so Tony's going to have to play a safety. Bringing the cue ball back down table behind the eight, the eight ball and the four ball. And he Just like it. that. Perfect. Very nicely done. Just like that. And Mike Siegel now will have to use a rail, and he has to hit the ball. 
One, two. Oh, that's a nice hit. He almost made it. But he does give Tony Allen a shot. I think Mike should have hit that a little bit harder. Uh, he kind of rushed that shot. And if he'd hit it harder, he'd either made it or he brought the two ball back over against the rail. You know, that's a good point you make, Allen. Uh, he took that shot quicker than he has most of the shots in this match. And he left Tony an easy shot. But Tony has left himself a long shot on the three ball. The three ball and the four ball are very close to each other, but he doesn't have a pocket for the four ball. So he's going to have to be playing a combination on the four and nine, which he's looking at right now. And if he gets the right position, it should be a nice combination. Well, he's left himself about a six or seven foot shot on the three ball. He'll be striking the cue ball with low left hand English and just bringing the cue ball off the rail and out for the four ball. A little bit too hard he's hit that. Now, does that eliminate the possibility of the combo here? Well, he may play the eight ball now. He may play the four ball into the eight ball and try to make the nine and the eight all in one shot. And he played the eight ball and he made the eight ball. That's a nice shot. He made the eight, didn't even touch the nine. No, his concern was just to make sure he pocketed the eight ball. He left himself, notice the position he's left himself. Perfect position on the four ball. And want an angle on the five ball, come back down table for the six ball. And he has the angle. He's controlling the cue ball rather nicely. And you would think that he should be able to get out on this game. Yes, he's going to go to the side rail with right hand English, pocketing the five ball, bringing the cue ball back down by the six ball. Oh, he drew it back. Wow. Well, whether he used the rail or simply <laughs> used the draw, it worked out well. well. He felt more comfortable drawing the cue ball. A lot of the pros draw the ball more than any other shot because you can control the cue ball a lot better drawing it. I think Mike Siegel knows that he's in some trouble now. Tony wins this game. It's, he's, gonna, he's got big problems. We're giving a commanding 10-6 lead. It's a race to 11, remember? And Tony Ellen trying to move to the final for the first time ever on the Pro Billiards Tour. And he's left himself not an easy shot. But he's going to go and wipe his hands. And think about it for just a moment. <laughs> this is not an easy shot. Of course, the thing that makes it tougher is he's got a distance to go. Had he been able to draw the ball farther down the table, that would have made it a lot easier. He got two straight in on the seven. So he had to just pocket the seven inside and leave himself a tough shot. But one thing's important. At least he's shooting at the nine. That's right. He gives himself a chance to win. Nice shot. Nicely done. So Tony Allen has taken a commanding lead in this second semifinal, trying to move on to the championship match. It's now 10-6. Allen leads Siegel. See how good he breaks them now. Oh, he hit them hard. Two, well, three. Two, three. <laughs> it's not unusual to see him make two or three. This is an unbelievable break right here. He made three balls, and he's got the cue ball down table with the one ball. And you heard a murmur go through the crowd, too. They realized what kind of a break that was. That's the kind of break that wins matches. He's going to pocket the one ball, I believe, and come two rails back over in the middle of the table for the three ball in the same pocket. I believe that's how he'll play the shot. One, two, perfect. Perfect. He's very confident. Play the three ball and come back out in the middle of the table for the four ball. Might be starting to sense some victory here. Oh, the four ball's gone. It's the six ball next. I thought the seven ball was the four ball. Wow, well, remember, he's... he cleaned out about half the balls <laughs> on the break. He's got a very nice layout here. Beautiful soft touch there. He'll draw the cue ball back for the eight ball in the same pocket. I wonder if Mike Siegel has started to rack his cue yet. Uh, he, he can't unscrew his cue yet, but <laughs> I think he knows that it's over. <laughs> and this is what remains, and you see the reaction already starting. There's nothing that Mike Siegel can do about it. He is not going to win a fourth U.S. Open nine ball championship because he has been defeated here by Tony Ellen. Ellen played so very well, and he wins the match. Immediately goes for congratulations. That's the final. It was Ellen all the way, 11 to 6 over the three-time champion, Mike Siegel. He'll be in the final.
The final is 11 to 6. That means Mike Siegel is eliminated, and then Tony Allen will advance to the final to take on Earl Strickland. Right now, Allen Hopkins is going to talk to both players. Let's start, first of all, with Mike Siegel. Okay, Mike, it seems like the only one you have a problem with in this tournament is Tony Allen. I know. Uh, the score was 5-5. You had ball in hand on the one ball, and uh, you got behind the five ball. What, what was the problem for that? What uh, was the reason? Well, when I tried to play for the two, I didn't want to get out in the center of the table where I had too much of an angle. Mm -hmm. So I tried. I really thought I had an easy shot. Hit the one with just a little bit of right English and go inside the five. Even if I kick it away from the rail, I got an easy shot. I just can't believe what I did. I mean, I ate something before I played, and I got a little, little lax of days ago. But, you know, Tony played great. From that point on, I don't think I pocketed another ball. So, I mean, you know, there's not too much I can do about it. You made a nice jump shot over the five, but then you hit the two know, directly yeah. on and went off the table. And yeah. from there, it was downhill. Yeah, I never had a chance. I mean, well, it's the break. I mean, I started today when I played my match with Archer. I was breaking from the right side. I was making balls in a break. And here, I think I made balls one time. It's a little discouraging when I know I can only win one game at a time and my opponent's making two balls in a break every time. <laughs> but, you know, I, I played good in this tournament, and I'm happy where I finished, really. Okay, Mike, you had a great tournament. Now to the guy who's been beating you twice now in the U.S. Open, Hi. Tony Ellen. Tony, uh, you went out, you ran three racks and out, you went ahead, was eight to five, and then you ran three racks and let him back to the table. Did you plan, did you want to let him back to the table? Did no, you want to get no. I just, I just felt the momentum coming my way, and I wanted to keep it, and uh, I just felt real good. And uh, the balls just happened to roll my way where uh, I could do something. And, uh, you, you, you made a lot of good uh, break shots. You were breaking, in the beginning, you were breaking kind of weak. You were letting the cue ball get away, but then I noticed you back, went back to the side there. You started breaking the balls hard again, and you were getting a shot on the one, and you were getting out. Uh, what do you think about your first time being on the finals of the U.S. Open or the semifinals of the U.S. Open on TV, you think you'll hold up for the finals? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm playing with a lot of confidence right now, and if the, if the balls let me perform well, I think I will. And, uh, I think you will, too, Tony. I think uh, you're going to be there. I think you're going to win the U.S. Open. Good luck to you. Thanks, so. Al. All right, thank you very much, Alan. 11 to 6 is the final, and the final match is set now. We know it's going to be Tony Allen taking on Earl Strickland. From the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, ESPN presents the 1993 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. We have reached the final round. Earl Strickland looking for his third U.S. Open title, and uh, Tony Allen, the other finalist, appearing in the final for the first time ever on the Pro Billiards Tour. Welcome to Virginia, along with Alan Hopkins. I'm John Sanders. Earl Strickland and Tony Allen. Earl Strickland coming from the winner's side. That means he's had a good week. Sure has. He's playing great. Uh, Earl's always the guy to beat when he's breaking the balls, and he has one of the best breaks on the tour, if not the best. When he's breaking them, he's awfully tough to beat because he makes two or three balls, and he keeps the cue ball with the one ball. And I guess the surprising run of Tony Allen has continued. He got past Mike Siegel, moved his way out of the loser's bracket, and into the championship. Even though it's Tony's first final in the, on the pro tour, Tony could win very easily. He's playing great. He's breaking the balls extra hard, and he's getting out when he has a shot. He's going to be very tough to beat. It is a race to 11. Our final match from here in Chesapeake, Virginia. The winner will be the 1993 U.S. Open nine ball champion. Set for the lag for the opening break of this final match of the 1993 U.S. Open nine ball championship. You're looking at Earl Strickland. In the red and in the blue, it's Tony Ellen. Looks like it's going to be a close lag. We're going to get the referee out of the way. <laughs> Ellen has won the lag for the opening break from Charleston, South Carolina. Hurricane Tony, and he played so well in defeating an earlier opponent, Mike Siegel. Breaking the ball really hard. Notice the cue ball in the center of the table again. He made a ball. Looks like he's made the two ball. And he's got a little bit of a tough cut shot on the one ball. Gonna have the rail, the one and the rail at the same time, come back across the table for the three ball. Make sure that this hugs the rail all the way down. Beautiful. It's a great shot. He's got the cue ball a little bit farther than he wanted to be, though. It, cue ball went forward a little bit. I don't think he wanted it to go forward. But if he makes the three, he'll pop the cue ball back out in the middle of the table, go into the side rail, and back out and take a cut on the four ball. That's a great shot right there. What well, makes it so difficult, John? You have, to, you have to hit it hard, and if you touch the rail, hitting it hard, the ball will bobble out of the pocket, and he'll miss the ball. But he hit it perfectly right in the pocket. Got a nice layout now. Come down for a combination on the five and six, it looks like. 
He's been playing so well all week long. First time he's ever made it to the final. A chance to win his first professional tournament. Oh, he's going to play it differently. He's going to come down and try to hit the six. That's a great shot right there. <laughs> Turned out perfect. So notice how the cue ball is right next to the seven ball. This makes the shot a little bit difficult because the cue, he can't do much with the cue ball. He's going to have to be very careful not to touch the seven ball. Just going to try and make the five. And does. Used both corners, but it dropped. <laughs> Well, he's got an interesting situation here. The six ball, he's going to play the six ball in the side pocket. And he's going to go two rails with the cue ball, come back around for the seven. One, two, perfect. A little bit hard. Go down. Oh, oh that's a tough break right there. He hit a little bit too hard. The way he's playing, though, he's holding up really well under the pressure. It doesn't seem to be bothering him being in the finals of the U.S. Open, does it? <laughs> it doesn't so far. And having to go through a couple of top-notch players. The win over Mike Siegel in the semifinal as they came back through the loser's bracket to take on Earl Strickland coming out of the winner's bracket. Notice how he's elevating his cue. He's going to hit this low with left-hand English. Hitting the rail, coming back over toward the side rail for the eight ball. Should not be a problem for him now. This was a good shot. He makes it look awful easy, which is a very tough shot. You're right. He really had to go down and dig that cue ball out of there, didn't he? Made a great shot there, which helped him to win this game, I think. The break and run coming up by Tony Allen. An easy shot at the nine, and that is it. That's the way it started for Tony Allen. He broke and ran the first game 1-0 over Earl Strickland, certainly setting the early tempo in his favor, and it continued in game two. Makes a nice combination here on the six and the eight. And that pretty much opened everything up. It's a perfect six right into the eight ball. Perfect angle. Six ball stays there for his next shot. And I think a lot of amateurs think that when you do combo shots, you have to blast the balls. You really don't. <laughs> he used good touch on that. Only the nine. Yeah! And he continued to dominate the early portion of this match, going up 2-0. But there was more to come for the young man from South Carolina, and that kind of play keeping Earl Strickland from getting a chance to take any shots at all. Here he's playing a safety, putting the three ball near the nine, bringing the cue ball back down table so that the eight ball and the seven ball are in the way of the path of the three ball. So now we get a chance to see the second-ranked player on the tour. An always intense Earl Strickland from Greensboro, North Carolina. You sit and wait for a long time, and then you look at this. <laughs> Earl's going to either go to the back rail and kick up and try to hit the three. He has to be careful he doesn't touch the nine first. I'm bringing the cue ball back down table by the corner there, trying to leave a safety. Or he can go to the side rail, kick one rail, and hit the three ball. Maybe get lucky and hit the nine. Maybe get put the cue ball behind the nine ball, leaving it safe. It's like he's decided on your first option, though. I hit the nine first. Remember I said, be careful you hit the nine, and you hit the nine first, and that'll cost him. That's going to be costly right there because now Tony's going to get ball in hand. He's already two games ahead. He's got a lot of confidence, and he's going to run the table. That's exactly what he did. So the foul and the ball in hand, giving the early advantage to the underdog. And I think Tony Ellen knows he comes in as the underdog against Earl Strickland, but a great start. He wins the first three games of the final match. We'll be the Along with Alan Hopkins, I'm John Sanders, and what a great start, Alan, for Tony Allen. He's got the break for game four, and he's won the first three. He's really breaking the balls great. He's hitting them hard, controlling the cue ball, making a ball, and getting a shot. And every time Earl gets to the table, <laughs> he doesn't have anything. He really hit those hard again, and he didn't make a ball this time. And that's unusual for him. We've seen him make two or three balls on a regular basis. What kind of a table did he leave for Earl? He left Earl a combination shot. Earl's going to have to cut the one ball thin and try to make the three ball. Not an easy shot. He'll be coming back out in the middle of the table, trying to get a shot at the one next. He should pocket the three, and then the one should stay down there for him. Go. Okay. Almost came up a bit short. 
And did he leave himself too tight? Or does this make this shot tougher now? No, he's okay. He's got a little bit of an angle. He's got some space. He can maneuver the cue ball a little bit. He should be okay. Made a nice shot on the three ball. Earl is trying to get started. Down 3 nothing. Earl's been playing well all week. He'll pocket the two ball in the corner, bring the cue ball back over to the side rail and back out for the four ball. Perfect. Right along the lines that you suggested on the telestrator, and it's Tony Ellen's turn to sit and suffer. If you notice, Earl likes to move the cue ball around the table a lot. He likes to take a full, sh a full stroke at every shot. Really hitting the balls with a lot of authority, pocketing the ball clean. And always thinking two or three shots ahead. Yes, he's, he's right now he's thinking about the seven ball. He's going to pocket the five ball. He has to play just the right position so they can get on the seven next. <laughs> Playing for a combination. Now he'll play the six ball and draw the cue ball back, trying to break open the seven and eight. Now he's gonna, he has a shot on the seven ball, apparently. It looked like he didn't have a shot on the seven ball, but he's going to play the seven ball. He's going to be careful on the hit here. Tony, I want to probably call a referee over. No, I guess it's... Does he have enough room? The path of the eight ball is what you got to watch out for. He hit it perfect. Beautifully done. There was no margin for error there. He made it. He's in great shape now for the eight and the nine. And Earl Strickland here at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia, gets on the board, takes game four. It's now a 3-1 lead for Tony Allen. And Earl Strickland, by winning the fourth game, now gets the break, and let's see what he can do here in game five. He also has an explosive break. Watch how hard he hits the ball. Brings the cue ball back down table. And he made the seven ball. He brought the cue ball back down table, but the one ball hit the side pocket and didn't go down table with the cue ball. So he's left himself a long shot on the one in the corner pocket. Earl loves long shots. <laughs> and then coming over to the side rail and back out for the two ball in the corner. Not an easy shot. Stalking the table a little bit. Low left hand English. Great shot. Hit a little bit hard, but it'll be okay. Now notice the three and nine. He makes the two ball, should be able to set himself up for a combination on the three and nine. It's a rather delicate tight cut though on the two ball. He's going to have to hit it very thin. You're the master of that shot. <laughs> Oh, that's a great shot. He hits it so thin, he hits the side ball and keeps the cue ball right there to set himself up for the combination on the 3-9. The combination for a win here in game five. Notice how thin he hits the two ball. And hits the five straight on, and the cue ball just stops. So he's not concerned about the five at all. He wants to be here for this combination. The others won't matter. For great win. shot. <laughs> that is the win for Earl Strickland. After losing the first three, he comes back to take two. Now down by just one. More to come from Chesapeake, Virginia. Welcome back to the final of the 1993 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship along with Alan Hopkins, a two-time winner here. I'm John Sanders and this is Tony Ellen. He raced out to an early lead. We're in game six as you see as we pick it up and Earl Strickland is watching. He'd come back to win games four and five but with those two shots it was Tony Ellen regaining the lead Four games to two, I'm trying to take charge here in Chesapeake at the Holiday Inn, and we certainly want to thank all the people for their help. Now let's look at game number seven and Tony Ellen's predicament here. Well, he snookered from the five ball to the one, so he's going to be forced to go to a rail or a masse shot, elevating his cue and trying to curve the cue ball around the five or going to the side rail and hitting the one ball directly. Which here's shot the, do you like? I think he's better off just making sure he hits the ball. He goes to the rail, he might not hit it, so he's going to mass. You think he miscued there? Yep. 
And that will mean ball in hand now for Earl Strickland. Yeah, I don't think he really hit the ball the way he wanted to. He shot that kind of quickly. What causes that? Is it simply a matter of you making a misjudgment on the shot or maybe not having enough chalk on the cue? Or Sometimes nerves, sometimes feeling confident that you're going to hit it well. Kind of like an easy putt when you hit the putt rather fast. <laughs> well, you want, well, you want it over with, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Earl is setting himself up for a combination. He loves to play combinations. He's going to set him up for a 2-9 combination. He had the combination in game five that gave him the victory. Let's see what he can do here in game seven. Ah, again, he does the combination. And Strickland taking game seven with a little help from the foul by Tony Allen. And he's back in it. Here's another combo. It's second in three wins for him. Notice how hard he hit that. He didn't take any chances. Hit it with a lot of authority right in the corner. Now as we pick up game eight, Here's Tony Ellen, and I think he might have touched the ball. Pat did, too. Pat. Pat. I wasn't even close. Yeah, but Allen touched right here. Yeah, what? It's tough to touch the ball. I was right here. No, it did hit it. That was the decision. The foul was called then in game eight. But Strickland. <laughs> People are clapping. I think they didn't want, I didn't want them to call a foul on Tony. Well, fortunately for Tony, it didn't turn out to be too bad because he then went on to run out, picking up the eight, now the nine. This is in game eight and a chance for him as he made it to reclaim the edge. It is 5-3, most prestigious of all. And the guy trying to win his first is still powering the brakes. That's Tony Ellen. Really hit the balls hard there, but he got a bad break on the one ball. The one ball went to the bottom rail and got on top of the, right next to the cue ball where he has no shot. I don't even believe he has a safety here. The only kind of safety he could really do is put the cue ball behind the three ball, it looks like. He's going to try to put the cue ball right behind the three, and he does it. That's a great shot right there. Tony Ellen took the first three games, then Strickland won games four and five. They've been seesawing back and forth since. Let's see who can break out here in the game nine, a race to 11. Notice how delicate this shot is here. He must come right off the second rail and just stop right next to the three ball. And Earl makes a nice kick shot. Earl kicked at the one ball and put the cue ball right back behind the three ball. <laughs> this is quite a battle going, down, going on in that far corner, isn't it? Notice how he hits this perfect, hits the one ball straight on, almost wakes, makes the one ball cross side. Catches the point, but notice the cue ball is right behind the three ball. Now Tony will be forced to kick at the ball down table, come back and try and hit the one. Well, that's a lot of green to cover. <laughs> sure is, John. He's got his work cut out. It's another way of playing the short rail. It's going to be tough to hit that way. And he missed it. Yeah, that was a tough shot to hit with the short rail. Ball in hand now for Strickland, and we've seen more fouls and ball in hands early on in this match than we have in some of our semifinal matches. Earl doesn't like to play too many safeties. You're going to notice Earl's going to shoot out most of the time. How's this table set up for him? A real nice setup here. All the balls are wide open. Near the pockets also. If you notice the three balls right near the pocket, the seven balls near the pocket, once he gets on the five ball, should be a piece of cake for Earl. Trying to cut the lead to one. Strickland, as I said, ranked number two in the world currently in the Pro Billiards Tour rankings to Johnny Archer, who was eliminated earlier in one of our semifinals by Mike Siegel, and then Mike Siegel falling in another semifinal to Tony Ellen. How, how come so many semifinals? Well, the format's <laughs> just a little bit different here. You have a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket, right? It's a double elimination format, yes. And Earl's just seem to keep shooting the balls in the pocket. He's playing well. That will make it 5-4. Strickland very much in it. But there is more to come. We have played nine games. Remember, you must win 11. Now, we move on now to game number 10. Tough shot. He's going to play a safety here. And he, he actually looks like he's left Tony a shot. And, and he did leave Tony a shot. This is toward the end now of game 10. Tony working on the eight, then the nine.
trying to go back up 6-4. I think Earl Strickland's going to have to get on one of his rolls if he's going to get back in this match because every time he makes a mistake, that young man has taken advantage of it. And in this case, Tony Ellen goes back up by two at 6-4. It was Earl Strickland's wife and Tony Ellen's girlfriend <laughs> sitting together. That's a little interesting, isn't it? <laughs> this is game 11, and you can see Ellen continuing to dominate when he gets his opportunity. Of course, that's what you like to see in a player. When you get the chance, you've got to take advantage of it. Definitely, John. He needs to take advantage of every chance he gets. Because if a guy like Earl Strickland gets on a roll, there might not be any chances. Notice the way Tony Ellen strokes the cue ball. The cue stick is right underneath his chin. Well, Earl's cue is nowhere near his chin. Why such a marked difference in style? It's just the way players play. I also put the cue underneath my chin, too. Some players do it that way, some players don't. Right under his chin, see? His aim. Great shot. Good cut on the nine ball. Game 11, then, goes to Ellen. It is seven to four. He has regained somewhat of control of this match. We're at the Holiday Inn in Chesapeake, Virginia. Delighted to have you with us here on ESPN for coverage of this final match. And game 12 begins on the break. Keeps making two balls on the break. Look at that eighth spinning. Of course, he's got the one, though, over there on the rail. That's going to be tough. He's got a bank shot. He can bank the one cross corner. That's how hard he hits the balls and just stops the cue ball in the center of the table. To the side rail, and now he's left with the bank shot on the one ball. Those balls just find those pockets for him <laughs> on the break, don't they? It's about the only ball on the table he doesn't have a shot at. And he played the bank, and he played at the right speed, so it stays in the middle of the table. He missed the ball, but he hasn't left Earl a shot. And you have to think of that in that situation. If you know that it's a very tough shot, don't leave it wide open for your opponent. But Strickland able to take advantage of that miss. And in this 12th game, that set up the eight. Come off a couple of rails for the nine. This might be the wake-up call for Earl Strickland. <laughs> he takes game 12. And it's now seven to five. So Strickland is back in it, but he has a lot of work to do. Seven to five, Earl Strickland has won the 12th game. He's going to have to do more than that. After falling behind early, and he makes a couple. Two balls on the break and a shot on the one, John. That's exactly what the doctor ordered for <laughs> Earl Strickland. Well, the two ball is on the bottom of the table, but if he makes the one, he should have position for the two ball. I believe he'll cut the one ball in the corner and come back and forth for the two ball. But Earl likes to bank balls, too, so he may bank this. He'd be banking it cross corner, bringing the cue ball down table. If he banks it, does he come off the rail or does he pull it back? If he draws the cue ball, he'll bring it down right about in the area there for the two ball. I think he's going to play it that way. Very delicate shot because it's cue ball control. It's very important. He banked it. He missed it. His cue ball control was perfect, though. He's in great shape for the two, but the one is still on the table. But let's see what Tony Ellen can do now that he has the chance. It's a tough shot. Cue ball control is very important. He just made sure that he had a shot at the two ball. He just cinched the one ball and come out in the middle of the table. Even smart though, shot. Even though it's a long shot, at least he has the good angle at the ball. It's definitely a smart shot, especially with a three-game lead, to make sure he's at the table and shooting. He's pocketing balls well. And he's put the nine ball up by the three ball now. And he may play a kiss shot off the nine ball with the three ball or he may just play the three ball right in the side pocket. What would you do at this point in the match, knowing you don't want to make a mistake and leave it open for Earl? You're out there playing so well, sometimes the pocket, there's Tommy Kennedy, last year's winner. Now, Tommy, a spectator with the rest of us for this final match, the championship match, and he does just cut it from the side. That's what I'm thinking. Why take a chance uh, of leaving the table for the other guy? That's confidence. When you're out there, you're really confident you're going to pocket the ball. Why take a chance kissing it off another ball? Tony made a great shot. Watch out. He doesn't want to get on top of the nine. Mm. He's okay. Just be careful. He doesn't touch the nine. 
So it'll be a foul and ball in hand for Earl. He had a foul called him earlier in this match. He's in pretty good shape now for the eight and then the nine. I'll go on a limb here and make a prediction that he <laughs> there you go. two balls, John. <laughs> You're pretty good at that. <laughs> He's trying to resume control here and go back up by three. He's done it. Well done by Tony Ellen. He has an 8-5 lead. Two of the best professionals going at it here. And controlling things right now definitely is Tony Ellen. He is only three games away from a U.S. Open nine-ball championship. And you see the reaction by Earl Strickland. He can't watch because the break has just been dominating. There's one. So he continues. He's breaking well, but he's not getting any luck after the break. He doesn't have a shot on the one ball again. He has a bank shot cross side. What's lucky about this, though, the two ball is down table with the one ball. He'll play the one ball. Oh, I guess the, no, it's the four ball is down. Excuse me. He'll play the one ball and come out in the middle of the table for the three ball. He must have made the two on the break. Pocket the one ball cross side, following the one ball and coming out in the middle of the table. Every shot is so critical at this point now. This is what we're going to find out oh. about the pressure. Boy, that was beautifully That's done. A great shot. That was right in the heart of the pocket. He has to be thinking about the U.S. Open title now. He's three games away. It looks like he's going to get this game here. I wonder if he's getting nervous, John. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. He's really pocketing well. Up, oh, look out. Oh. Mm, did not want that. Behind the five ball. And a mistake like that can turn the whole match around. And He's he not happy. <laughs> what are his options now? Well, he should have been in the middle of the table, but now he's going to have to kick to the side rail where he's looking now and try to hit the four. He must make sure he hits the four. He may get lucky and make it or leave Earl safe. He's really upset. I think he's really bothering him. Watch out for the eight. Really bothering him that he didn't get position. Oh, he almost made it. It's a good hit, though. But he does leave Strickland with a shot. Well, not an easy shot. No, a very difficult shot, but at least he has a shot at it. He's glad to be back at the table. He was thinking the score was going to be 9-5 to five with him not even shooting. He's got a tough cut up the corner. Now let's see how costly that mistake in positioning the cue ball turns out to be for Tony Allen. He must hit the one and the rail at the same time here. Oh, he played a safety. Oh, and, and he played it well, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's a great shot. I think Tony is snookered down here. Surprised to see Euro play a safety. He likes to shoot. He's made a great safety, though. He's got the cue ball right up against the seven ball, and Tony can hit the four directly. So he's going to be forced to go to a rail and try to hit the four ball. Maybe some of his thinking at this point, he's down three games. He doesn't want to get careless. It's a good point, John. If he can play a safety, why not? And give yourself another chance to get back on the table. He's fortunate here that the cue ball lay right up against the seven ball because if it comes out another half an inch, Tony has a, a run out. See if he hits it. Nope, hit the six ball first. And that'll be ball in hand for Strickland. And that is bad news. For Tony Ellen. You never know, letting Earl back to the table, what's going to happen. He's very explosive, especially towards the end of the match. Well, that's how you win championships, and that's why he's got a chance to match Siegel with number three. But he has a long way to go. He's got a nice layout with this, this run out here. Leaves himself an angle on the six ball. Notice the angle. He'll bring the cue ball back down table for the seven ball. Probably going two rails. One. There's a second rail. You've seen him do this before. <laughs> we played it just like I would, John. Attaboy. <laughs> well, he's in great shape now. Send the eight down in the far corner. And stay right there for the nine. That to wrap it up. There is life in Earl Strickland. He's within two. It's eight to six. The Strickland comeback has begun. I guess the question is, can he continue now? What a big turnaround there, John. Instead of being 9-5, it's 8-6. I hope that doesn't bother Tony to the point where he won't be able to play now. 
Well, Look at he this won't be one. able to play for a while. <laughs> won't be playing this game here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a time for that. Four balls on the break and a shot at the two ball. Wow. Amazing. That's a great break, and he doesn't look like he's hitting them that hard. He makes great contact with the one ball. They were, had like pocket-seeking missiles. <laughs> nice shot on the two. Got a nice layout here, doesn't have to do much. Well, the key was the break, and you look at the man who's waiting, hoping to get back on the table, Tony Ellen who used that break to his advantage in beating Mike Siegel and in taking the early lead here over Earl Strickland. But things might be beginning to change. He's really playing well. He's stroking the balls, hitting him with authority into the pocket, moving the cue ball around. He moves the cue ball around a lot of times, but he doesn't even have to. <laughs> I think he does it just to stay in stroke. This to get even closer. Now it's 8-7. Strickland, after making four balls on the break, gets out. He'll change now to the darker cue. That will be the one he'll use for what he hopes is another successful break. And at this point, Tony Ellen has got to start to worry a little bit. Tony's going to be a little concerned now about getting that ninth game. He had a chance to get it. He didn't get it. And now he hasn't had a chance at the table again. Because Earl Strickland has played so well in winning games 14 and 15. If he can make it three in a row, we will be even at eight in a race to 11. And it can turn so quickly. Well, he continues to make, he almost made about three there. <laughs> he made the corner ball. He keeps making the corner ball. He's pocketed two balls. He's pocketed one ball, actually. He made the corner ball only. The concern here is the two ball and the one ball. The one ball, he's going to have to play in the corner pocket and bring the cue ball back down table, going to the side rail with low right-hand English, and bring the cue ball back down table for the two ball. Wow. One of Earl's favorite shots. <laughs> Let's see how he handles it. Rather easily. <laughs> Didn't go all the way to the rail, stopped just short of it, but that's the kind of shot that can help open up a table. Go Billiards Tour. Trying for his first tournament championship on the Pro Billiards Tour, but running into a snag in a guy by the name of Earl Strickland, who just won't let him back out. Got a nice layout here. The four, five, and six are close together. You like them close together, but not too close together. <laughs> exactly. You gotta have a pocket for them. And the rest of the table is set up very nicely. Want to make any predictions here? I predict he'll get out here. I think it's going to be a tie score, 8-8. Eight, eight. His concern is the seven ball. He wants to get on the seven ball. He'll draw the cue ball back to the rail for the seven ball, hitting it low. What is the feeling for a player now like Strickland, who was down? He was in trouble at 8-5. Then you get going all of a sudden, and, and it kind of puts you on another level, doesn't it? Like a second breath. <laughs> and, of course, the reverse is true of Tony Ellen, who has seen a big lead evaporate. It is now 8-8. Eight, eight. The winner needs 11. ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship continues now from the Holiday Inn here in Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm John Sanders along with Alan Hopkins. And this is a man on a mission right now. Spins another one in. And also kept the cue ball from going in. Making two balls on the break. Has the one ball straight in the corner. It looks like it's straight in the corner. The four ball... He can just roll the cue ball up for the four ball. He's made the one in the two ball and the three ball on the break. Isn't that a tough shot, though, as close as the cue ball is to the one ball? I believe the referee would be watching to make sure he doesn't double hit the cue ball here, John. You're right. <laughs> He'll elevate his cue up in the air. He's going to shoot down on the cue ball. Nice touch. Very nice. Nicely done. Here. Right in the center of the pocket. He's got a little bit of a problem here. This is a very nice touch here. Just any perfect in the center of the pocket. And the cue ball, notice the cue ball comes up off the rail a little bit also. Drawing the cue ball back for the five. Look out. Don't go Look too out. far. Too far. 
seven balls in the way of the corner, so he's going to have to play in the other corner pocket. And the six ball is down table, so he's going to be following the cue ball over to the side rail and back out in the middle of the table. Not an easy task. No, it isn't. The five ball go in the corner, and the cue ball is going to travel over to the side rail and back out in the middle of the table for a shot on the six ball. He should be in the center of the table when he's done. But the first order of business is to make the ball. This is a great angle, and that's a terrific shot. Totally oh, pocketing well. He has determination, it looks like, doesn't he? <laughs> he hasn't blinked in about three games. He has. <laughs> Although Tony seems rather cool sitting there. He looks like he's waiting for a shot. I bet he'd like to have that four ball over there. I'll bet he would. Here comes Earl Strickland. Down for the eight with the nine waiting. He hit a little bit too hard. He would like to have been a little straighter on the eight. A bit of a cut shot. Nice. Very nice. And used enough of the rail to get himself in good position to run in the nine and take the lead. Earl's playing great. He has done just that for the first time in this match. He is in front. It's 9-8. Strickland was down 8-5, and he's now up by one. Notice how thin he hits the eight ball. And the cue ball only goes a little bit off the rail for the nine ball. Real nice touch. That touch set it up. So after 17 games, this final is heading for the finish line. And let's see if your prediction is correct. As he hits some more off the break, the player that wins that gets to the ninth game first is the one who's toughest to beat. Very big favorite, John, when you get to the ninth game first. Earl's winning 9-8 now. For Tony to win the match, he has to beat Earl 3-1 to one from here. And he hasn't even gotten to the table yet. But I predict he'll get to the table this game. Earl doesn't really have a shot on the one ball. He's going to have to kick at the one ball, send the one ball down table, and lead the cue ball back behind the three. And he hits the three, stops there, and puts the one. That's a great shot. Because it does not leave Tony a shot. Definitely, that was a great shot. Nice, safe shot by Earl. Surprised he played a safety, but when he does play a safety, he really plays it great. You know, that's a good point, because you mentioned the fact that he doesn't really like to play safeties, but <laughs> he has played some key safeties in this match. So now, let's see what Tony Ellen can do. Remember, he must make contact with the ball. He's going to play a jump shot. Now, Tony, Tony is also an expert at the jump shot. He hits the one. That's a great shot. But unfortunately, he's left the early shot on the one ball. But just to elevate your cue and shoot the cue ball over the five ball and hit the one at this point in the match is a great shot by Tony. I thought it was even better because he was pretty close to the ball in front of him, closer than a lot of people wouldn't be able to do it. He's one of the better players on the tour with the jump shot. Well, he just proved that. Now the question is, what can Earl do with what's left? Well, safety paid off for Earl. Played a safe on the one. Now he's got a shot and a chance to go ahead 10-8. Balls are open nicely. He's got a shot on the three ball. Pocketed the two on the break. He'll bring the cue ball two rails around the table for the four. Speed control is very nice. The center of the table. And always giving himself a little bit of an angle, enough of an angle that he can work off of that next shot. Angles help you to move the cue ball around. He'll go two rails again. Oh, he went one rail. Watch out for the side pocket. Well, he took a chance there, but he got away with it. He cleared it. Sets himself up. Earl's really stroking well. He's got a Boy, very yeah. nice stroke. Long, smooth stroke. Didn't go too far that time, did he? No. Left himself in great shape for the seven. Excuse me, the six. Still must work on the seven and the eight. And it's tough. You sat there for a long time, and when you get back, you don't have a shot. It's a real tough break for Tony Allen in that one game. Earl has, since then, Earl has broke and ran out. Or, left, or played a good safety and left Tony no chance at all. Perfect position on the nine ball. This to go up 10-8 and move within one game of his third U.S. Open nine ball championship. <laughs> Strickland very, very pleased with the way he's played, and why not? He's won five games in a row and has the lead. Can he finish it off? Watch out for the cue ball. Wow, there's Tony's chance. It is a chance for Tony Allen. 
and it's the first mistake that Earl Strickland has made in six games. He drew the cue ball on the break there and drew it down table right into the corner pocket. That could cost him the match. Tony's got cue ball in hand. You know, he's been breaking so well, too. Watch, he draws the ball. He doesn't touch another ball, and the cue ball goes directly in the corner pocket. There's a break for Tony Allen, some daylight. Watch out. Okay. But well, Tony's got himself kind of funny right here. If he stops the cue ball, the six ball's in the way, so he's going to have to elevate his cue and draw the cue ball back for the three ball. This time in the match, John, I, it's a very tough shot because of the score being 10-8 got to be careful here. You don't bobble the pocket. You hit it directly in the pocket. The pressure is on because, oh. oh, he missed the shot. He knew that he had to get out or it might be over. He shot that kind of quickly, too, if you notice. Well, we talked about that earlier in the match. Sometimes the shot you want to get over with, you do shoot too quickly. He just hits it over on the edge of the pocket a little too much because he's trying to draw the cue ball back. Causes him to miss the two ball. It's and I like play. it when they look at the pocket in disbelief that it didn't <laughs> accept the ball. Well, Earl looks has a, like he has a bank shot right here. Unless he can cut it right in. Oh, he got a good cut in? Okay. And I think Tony be very fortunate to get back to the table. Balls are spread out nicely. Earl's got his rhythm going. Just come back from being down three games. Trying to win again. And this would be six games in a row, but it would also be his third U.S. Open nine ball title. And he can sense it now. What a disappointing way for it to end for Tony Allen, who had such a great tournament. Tough break to be so close and yet so far. Earl Strickland knows now. He's got a nice shot on the nine. But this is what nine ball is all about. And Earl Strickland wins the last six games <laughs> to lock up his third U.S. Open nine ball championship. <laughs> he knows how many it is. Earl Strickland is your winner for 1993. I think a victory salute for North Carolina over South Carolina, huh? <laughs> He's definitely happy. <laughs> He's the champion. 11 to 8 is the final. We'll be back to talk to the winner and the loser when we come back. 11 8 is the final. Tony Allen had the early lead, could not hang on. Let's check in with him now. Here's Allen Hopkins. Tony being ahead 8-5, to five, and then Earl coming back and winning, getting ahead of you 10-8. Then you still got a chance to get to the table, and it came down to the two ball. And you seemed like you took your eye off the two ball or just missed it? Yeah, I just uh, was looking at my position. I had picked the spot on the table where I wanted the cue ball, and I just more or less concentrated on that spot and took my eye off the two ball and uh, just jarred a little. I bet you felt real confident that if you could get out, you'd win the match. I felt like I was, uh, I didn't think he was going to go back to the table, but that's pool and, you know, that's that's the business. Well, you played great and you're the runner-up and congratulations. Thanks, Al. Now I'm going to talk to the champ, Earl Strickland. Earl, 1993 U.S. Open, three-time U.S. Open champion. You were losing eight to five and you came back and you won six in a row. How do you do it, Earl? <laughs> well, uh, thanks to Tony, he played a bad position on the, uh, on the four ball for the corner there. He got snookered behind the five, and that was the key to me coming back. Uh, I think if Tony would have won that game and had broken run another rack, I think uh, he would have won the tournament. But that's full. You know, you got to play good position. You got to make all the shots and, and, and can't miss. And if you do in critical situations, these players come back from behind. Well, congratulations, three-time U.S. Open champion. And now we go to the sponsors of the tournament, Barry Berman and Barry Berman and Jim Bakula from Brunswick. Earl, on behalf of Key Master Billiards in Norfolk and Virginia Beach, well-deserved champion you are for the 1993 U.S. Open. Here's Thank your you. plaque. Cherish it forever. Thank you. And Jim Bakula, Jim Bakula from Brunswick Billiard. Congratulations on a great Thank victory, you, Earl. Thank you very on much. On behalf of Brunswick Billiards, I am proud to present to you this big $15,000 check <laughs> for the winners. This be tough to put in my pocket, huh? <laughs> now, he'll find a way to get that in the bank, I'm sure. Earl Strickland has won his third U.S. Open nine-ball championship, the final 11-8, to a dramatic comeback over the challenger, Tony Allen. But it was too much Earl Strickland. He got in control and won the last six games, and he wins the match. We hope